Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. Donnie Gilson here, 716 1204 in the AM. <clears throat> if you were listening to or watching my channel over the weekend, I did post uh, my last Wednesday night show where I talked about John Moore <clears throat> and his inside information from the U.S. military in regards to the Biru and the military preparing to bug out. Now, I want to play that for you. I, I improved the audio on it, that's why I took it down. But I also wanted to show you a couple things that I recorded over the weekend um, while I was down by the Truckee River. Let me, let me uh, just show you some of the stuff I recorded. Guys, so I'm taking a shot of the sun. And as we can see, that other anomaly is right there. Not moving, but moving with the sun as I move it back and forth. You can see the lens flare that goes over it, but the rest of it stays right with it. So, true and blue, guys, that is a second sun. Right there in welders' glasses. Can't deny it. Not a lens flare. Definitely not a lens flare. That's the lens flare right there. Right underneath. But that object is staying stationary. Right there. Whatever that object is. I do want to stomp it here real quick and as you saw it did start to move however I was moving the welders glasses at that point in time just trying to adjust it but when I brought it to a stationary position right there even when I zoom up it didn't move it's a strange anomaly don't you say I mean I was adjusting the welders glasses at that point in time right there. That's an object for sure. I just don't know what it is. But you can see it, true blue right there guys. As you can see that thing was not moving uh, as I moved, panned it back and forth there. Let's go into another uh, piece of footage here, hang on. All right, this piece of footage right here, I was actually down by the Truckee River trying to uh, do that imagery again. Let's see what we what we came up with. All right, so it's a little bit after I did that tape, and we're down at the Truckee River, and we're going to take a look at it as we have the welders' glasses right here. We're going to come over and take a look at the sun here real quick, and as we point in the direction of the sun, and we put the See, now as I start to adjust now, it Now, all of a sudden, you see that one object underneath the sun again. And see how it kind of stays in its... And it moved a second ago, but then it stayed. I think as it adjusted, it just got auto-adjust. Let's move in on it. quite sure what to classify that as. That's definitely something. And then as we take the welders glasses away, you can see where we are. There's washed out sun. Look at that sun. How washed out it is. A beautiful day down. Alright, so I go into the next piece of footage and it gets a little bit more different. Hang on, let's take a look. All right, so here we go with the next piece of footage. All right, so it's me and Toto down here. Hey, Toto, say hi to everybody. Yo, no, Toto, Toto, say yo, what's up? All right, so we're down at the Truckee River again. Just a few minutes later, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this welder's glass right here. I'm gonna see basically what I think is happening is as I adjust it, as we look at the sun here, we see it. Now we put this over, and it's just like an auto-adjusting. But as you can see, as I hold it, the, the, the thing flat, 
to the camera, we have two definitive objects. We have a sun to the left and a sun to the right. And we have these weird triple lens flares. Those are lens flares because they're moving. The other one is not moving. When I move the camera, of course, it's going to move. But when I keep it steady, that does not move or bear from its trajectory. And as we can see, the washed out sun there, I mean, it is washed out. Look at that. And we've got a beautiful day down here at the Truckee River today. Toto's chilling. Right, Toto? But then as we take this, these welder's glasses and we just put it up and we make sure that it's steady. And very strange indeed. I'm kind of limited on what I'm going to be doing as far as videos for the rest of the summer. Um, to stop by www.ursuadams.com and also tune in to my radio show every Monday and Wednesday night on freedomizerradio.com uh, where I start at 9 p.m. specific standard time going all the way till midnight. But also just remember over here uh, on my website uh, we have added a link to one of our sponsors here at the Pythagoras Conference. Uh, if you'd like to buy tickets you can register right through my website right here and uh, basically we just go to registration now which will bring you right Right over to the event area and if you want to buy tickets for the show or for the conference it is $499 there's different uh, a la carte items but also when you uh, if you do buy you can always enter promotional code as well and just type in DON and apply it and you'll get a instant $100 off of your uh, off of your ticket uh, there for the Pythagoras conference that is going to be there on October 10th through the 14th 2012 so definitely swing by and grab that uh, come to PythagorasConferenceGlobal.com for further information uh, also I am on Truth Frequency Radio on Saturday nights as well uh, please tune in uh, at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, going all the way till about 11 or midnight, depending on the day. Uh, just remember also www.ursuadams.com for all your latest videos and updates, or on our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash ursuadams. Let's go into uh, the John Moore um, show that I did uh, in regards to what he was talking about in regards to this bug out. Here we go. Oh, uh, yeah, guys and gals, welcome to 32 Degrees of Insanity, 7 11, 2012. Let's see here, this just sounds like something uh, just went lost talk radio. Let's see if I can find where that was. Uh, it looks like I'm getting a little double feedback here. Okay, here we go. All right, so we're back. It is 9.04 in the p.m. <coughs> Live. Of course, we had a great show on Monday night. Uh, Next week, we are going to be having some really good stuff, but I do want to start off with uh, we, uh, the Pythagoras Conference. It is a brand new sponsor here uh, with uh, 32 Degrees of Insanity. We are going to be giving away tickets uh, coming up at the end of the month. Uh, in regards to this, it's going to be a call-in. You're going to basically, what you do is you would call in, um, and I would give you the uh, basically the uh, password of sorts. And then we'll put your name into a basket or something of that sort. I don't know. I haven't decided how I'm going to do it yet. Uh, and, of course, we'll, uh, you'll get a chance to win uh, free tickets to four days uh, at uh, the Pythagoras Conference in October. Also, if you go over to www.ursuadams.com, you can buy tickets for the Pythagoras Conference. Uh, and, basically, when you go and buy tickets over the Pythagoras Conference, you get $100 off when you write in the discount discount code DON, and that will give you 100 bucks right off the top of the ticket, uh, which is, I think, it's kind of spending, guys. It's $499 for the four days. Uh, that brings it down to three ninety nine. So, you know, but, uh, you know, think about it. You know, a lot of people are paying that for Burning Man, things like music festivals, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, this is a, a nonprofit organization. They are, uh, all of the proceeds that are being used for the Pentagras Conference are being used to get new, uh, 
for the next year to get a better, better venue uh, and uh, some great speakers. they got great speakers coming uh, this time around. We're going to try and get those speakers on the show uh, because we've got about 90 days left until uh, the Packers Conference in October. Uh, so a lot of things happening uh, today as well. Um, I am going to play, and there's about a 30-minute uh, uh I don't normally play radio shows on my uh, unless I'm involved with it, you know, like Clyde Lewis or or uh, Truth Frequency. Um, I did an interview yesterday, by the way, uh, out in the U- uh, United Kingdom, uh, and that is actually going to be coming out. Um, I actually have a copy of that interview uh, fairly soon. I want to play it for you guys because I, I, I went into some really in-depth stuff, and I even surprised myself a little bit in regards to Nibiru and. Today, John Moore came out on his radio show, and this is we're going to play a little later, uh, uh, probably 15, 20 minutes from now. I'm going to play that 30-minute session with John Moore. I wasn't on the show, but, you know, everybody's talking, you know, I talk about Nibiru. Marshall Masters talks about Nibiru, and all kinds of people talk about Nibiru, but not a lot of these mainstream Christian radio networks really talk about Nibiru. And this guy named John Moore uh, came out today uh, with some inside information from the military. He, I guess he uh, uh, has some inside sources within the United States military. Uh, and they are getting ready to bug out, bug out of the east and west coasts. So uh, because of a interplanetary object that seems to be heading our way. Well, what have I been talking about? But see, I want to give you guys a little bit of somebody else that's talking about it. Not only me, but others that are talking about it as well, because it seems like always the focus is on me. I'm the fear monger. I'm the one that's telling you all about this and that this is some mythical planet. No. A lot of other people are now starting to jump on this bandwagon, and a lot of people are just trying to get the information out. You know, if this doesn't happen, it doesn't. But you know what? I tell you one thing, the one thing that we can do is prepare to be ready, spiritually aligned, for if something does happen. Because we are not guaranteed our breath tomorrow. We wake up each day, we put our hat on, we put our pants on the same way. But we're not guaranteed the breath we take tomorrow. So wouldn't you rather be spiritually okay? Spiritually set, than not to be spiritually set at all and taken off guard. You know, a lot of people say, and this is what John Moore is going to say, you know, prepare, prep yourself for materialistic things. I, I really don't care about that. I mean, I, I believe that God will provide me with everything that I need. So if anything happens, say the grid goes down or something happens, I'm not too worried about it. I watched this thing today. Uh, it's, uh, uh, sitting down in the Truckee River, and I was watching uh, a, a video about uh, Hurricane Katrina. And I was l- l- listening to some of the great feats, not only that, uh, you know, the military did, but the, the um, people that were involved, uh, and just strangers, helping strangers. I believe in humanity. I believe 100% in humanity, and I tell you, if the grid falls down tomorrow, I am not worried, because I know that somebody out there is going to help me just as much as I would help them. I'm not worried. So I don't put any fear or anything. It's nice to prepare, but it's more, it's, it's even better to prepare yourself spiritually and align yourself spiritually so that you're, that you're, that, that you're, that you're, you're, you're ready. You know, you're ready to, to move forward, you know, um, and I think that's a very important thing to set yourself up with, you know. Uh, if you guys are listening to me over on www.pursueadams.com uh, or over on Blog Talk, uh, please come on over to www.freedomizerradio.com. I guess it's, again, that's www.freedomizerradio.com. Also, if you'd like to call in, and speak to me, uh, 347-324-3704. Again, that's 347-324-3704. Or you can just listen to the show uh, as well uh, on your cell phone. Uh, you know what? I think we should create, and I, I have to talk to Proof about this, 
But I would love to get a Freedomizer app for our cell phones, for, for people's cell phones. Now, I might just talk to my webmaster about that and see if we can either come up with like a 32 Degrees of Insanity app or uh, a Freedomizer app where, you know, you can just, you know, come on and listen to the show on your cell phone just by an application. Well, I think it's an idea. You know, I think that if we, as we start getting more and more into this, oh, proof's on. There he is. Okay. I didn't even know proof was there. Uh, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's something that I, that, that, that would be cool to put together. Uh, because a lot of times, you know, people are out and about on their cell phones. You know, yeah, it's nice to call into the show, but wouldn't it be nice to just have an application for the show as well? It would be absolutely outstanding. Uh, let's see here. What do I got going on? Also, I was, today, I was spending a lot of time, I've been, it's been so hot in Reno. Oh my gosh. It has just been super, super duper hot. We have been breaking double digits. I'm sorry, triple digits. Uh, you know, we were a little bit over 100 degrees today, and, uh, we've been that way for like the last four days straight, and the nights are not helping either. Uh, thank gosh, I'm not in Minnesota anymore. Uh, the humidity would just kill me. But I, you know, my last place I lived, when I was living in Minnesota, I had beautiful central air. I don't have that any, unfortunately, where I'm living now. I'm living in an old school Victorian home. So, it's, you know, it's, it's definitely old school, and I, I'm just like, yeah, I don't need an air conditioner. So we went down to the river today, Toto and I, and got Toto back. Everybody was worried about Toto. Oh, we were worried about Toto on Monday night show. I told you how Toto had uh, had somehow broke out, you know, of, uh, of, of the house. Either somebody let him out or something to that. And then when I got off the show on Monday night, I looked up and I saw one of my windows that doesn't have a screen on it, but it was open. But this window is, I've got like this, these, these shutter windows, you know, they're the ones that you crank open. And I'm like, no way did he jump out of that window because if he jumps down that window, that means he's got a good 20 foot drop to them because I've got these huge bolted ceilings, but he could have went up the loft and he could have got to that and then jump down. I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe he did this, you know, because I was kind of blaming the landlord <laughs> on Monday. I was going off, but the landlord, we, we finally found out the Toyota was in the palace, so the landlord helped me go get him yesterday. So we went to the doggy, the doggy jail. Oh my gosh, the doggy jail. That was fun. So I'm waiting in line, you know, of course we have to. I was I was shocked to see how many dogs were in the Reno dog pound. But there Toto shows up on the picture. And here he is, he's you know, he's got his his uh his mug shot. And I'm like, Oh great, you know, so we're sitting there and we, you know, I'm thinking Toto's gonna be all like confused and, you know, scared and on this little run, I go in and I get him. And he's just sitting there, dude, what's up? Like, nothing like that. I mean, he was living in the Elton. I was like, I looked at him, I go, he's just like, hey, what's up, dude? And, you know, he has been just kind of a, like a cocky little dog ever since the game. Oh, like, dude, that broke out. Or at least I, I showed you. And he, and he cost me 80 bucks, too, to get him out of the damn fucking doggy, doggy, doggy pound. Uh, but anyway, so we got Toto back. So Toto and I are down at the river today. And we're enjoying the, uh, the beautiful Truckee River. Uh, threw him in the lake about four times. Or in the, in the river about four times. Uh, and, uh, I, my and myself jumped in as well. And so we're sitting, we're sitting there and I, I'm videotaping the sun. And, we are getting with we're, we're videotaping with the with the uh, and I showed you one of the videotapes uh, last on Monday night show, uh, but I I started taking some film footage of the sun with uh, with the welders glasses, and we have a definitive two suns out there. There's something out there. Something is next to that sun. It's not moving. I don't know what it is. 
but it's definitely not our sun. And it's not a lens flare. I'll tell you that for dang sure. It is not a lens flare. And whatever this is, it is huge. You know, and it's, you know, I don't think it's Venus. I don't think it's Jupiter. Uh, it can't be any of those. So it's got to be what I think it is. So we're going to be doing some in-depth analysis into into those things as well. Uh, but we've got a couple things I want to go over tonight as well before we get into this John Moore thing. And I'm actually just going to go over to my Facebook page. If you guys, are, uh, I know a lot of people have been trying to friend me on my Facebook page, and I've been getting uh, uh, responses like this. Is there another area that we can go to? Um, to friend you on Facebook, and I do have another one. It's uh, it's uh, D O N N I E Gilson G I L L S O N, uh, and that is uh, you can find that one. It's this kind of Los Angeles uh, uh, thing. On it. You can join that one. That one's not as big as our Facebook, uh, the one that we have the Don Adams, Donnie Gilson, the Nedak one, uh, and then of course we have a Donnie Gilson one, but that one's been closed down for quite some time because that one's exceeded its its limits for some time, but the most of the work I do over at www.facebook.com forward slash Ursu Adams. And when you go over there, there is a subscribe button, so you guys can subscribe. There are a little over 1,700, 1,800 subscribers over on that side right now. Uh, you know, so everybody's, when I put something of, of importance up, you can, uh, you can do that. You can also post in the comments, I think, and, uh, so, you know, you, 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 it's the same thing as being a friend. Or you can also join us on our like page as well. Uh, that is at uh, www.facebook.com uh, forward slash uh, the message 2012. So anyways, last night I was uh, uh, did an interview with uh, a place down in um, uh, the UK. Uh, they are called O.UK, and uh, we are going to be playing that. I'm probably going to do it next week. Uh, but some of the stuff that I was talking about last night really played out. And when I heard John Moore's video this morning, or his radio show this morning, I was like, wow, a lot of the stuff that I was talking about, uh, John Moore started talking about as well. And I, I, it was weird. This is weird because we, we, I, I don't know anything of this guy. The only thing I know of this guy is uh, uh, what people have told me. Uh, he is a kind of a left-wing uh, Christian guy. Uh, very, I, I almost think he's militia-oriented, uh, but uh, he's you know definitely left-wing Christian, definitely left-wing Christian, and you know even probably going right down the biblical lines. Boom, you know, no no gearing away from it, you know, and so uh, intense guy. But uh, he has a delivery about him, but he, he, he was talking about Nibiru today. And I want to play that uh, that for you here in a little bit. We'll play it right after the first break here uh, as we come in here at the bottom of the hour. Now, also, uh, I don't know if you guys heard about this today, but uh, uh, some really disturbing stuff coming out of Egypt today. I don't know if you know that the, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood has now taken over uh, the government there in Egypt, and there's a couple two two major disturbing things coming out of Egypt. The first one uh, that I'm going to cover here is that the death cult hopes to destroy the pyramids. That's right, uh, and they're they're basically calling this Muslim Brotherhood the death cult. I don't know why, but uh, you know, after I tell you the next article, you're probably going to know why. Now, I'm going to read this article here. The pyramids, they are one of the wonders of the world, the symbol of the once great society of ancient Egypt. They are iconic and timeless, standing for thousands of years to find presence measurements of their age, precise measurements of their age. To most, they represent a mammoth feat of human endeavor, a triumph of engineering, mathematics, and human labor that itself spanned generations. For years, Muslims have plotted to destroy them. Now, I'm not saying that uh, you know, this, I'm reading the copy. Uh, I want to say, I say that all Muslims want to destroy. I think they're extreme Muslims want to, to destroy. That's they're very extreme Christians too. So I, I want to make sure we we clarify that because I do have Muslim Muslims as well, and uh, you know I want to make sure that we clarify that. So we're real extremists. That's right. Now the violent fundamental fundamental fundamentalist Muslims hold the nation of Egypt Egypt in their thrall. 
Well, the fundamental, we're talking about the brotherhood, the Muslim, uh, uh, the, the Muslim brotherhood. They call for the destruction of the ancient pyramids that have begun anew. The Azranian International News Agency reported Tuesday that Baharin's Sheikh of Sunni Sheikhs and the President of National Unity, Abid al-Latif al-Muhammad, called on Egypt's new president, Mohammed Morsi, to destroy the pyramids and accomplish what the Saudi Mir bin Alas could not. According to AINA, the debate among other Muslim theocrats seems to be whether Morsi and his Islamist thugs are pious enough to destroy these symbols of paganism. What? What was the last time I, that... What? What? Symbols of paganism? <laughs> what do the pyramids have to do with paganism? That's... Okay, that's... A, the, <laughs> I'm so okay. <laughs> and i got to tell you something about the pyramids. I've been doing some real research lately on the... On, I don't know if to continue with this here, but i, I got to stop off because of the symbol of paganism thing that bugs me. Uh, I went and lined up the latitude and longitude of the Giza pyramids and then brought them back to uh, a deck and a raw that I could uh, put into the worldwide telescope. And of course it leads me right underneath the Andromeda galaxy. Now here's something very interesting. I also went and put the latitude and longitude for the Mount of Olives where Jesus Christ supposedly ascended to heaven and converted that into a deck and Ra. And guess what it led me? <laughs> to the furthest, basically where this, where right off to the, to the left of where the Giza pyramids would be lined up. So literally, directly straight over. So I'm doing a little research on what because we know, or at least I know, from my esoteric research, that Jesus Christ spent some time in the Egyptian mystery schools. And uh, so I, I'm trying to figure out what Christ and Egypt have to do and co have, have in common. Because here's the thing. People have, you know stated that Egypt is all about Lucifer, and well, where did Moses come out of, guys? Where did Moses come out of? You know, the, 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 the parting of the, of the Red Sea, and all of that. Something that's Egypt and Christ, and, and Jerusalem, and all that, they have something to do with each other. It's really weird how extreme Muslims are trying to destroy Christianity, or they're trying to combine it into, uh, what do they call it, uh, Chrislam, 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 the Church of Chrislam. You know, some Muslims have turned to me and say, hey, Donnie, when are you going to convert to becoming a Muslim? I go, what? What? They're like, when are you going to hop on the bandwagon and know the truth? Well, I believe everybody has their own. You know, even, even I was watching, uh, and I talked about this on Monday Night Show. I was, t I was watching this 2020 thing with Barbara Walters about heaven. And I was listening to this very pristine Muslim professor, scholar in the Quran. And he said it very eloquently. He, he, he said, he says, you know, for we not, we can judge anyone of how they reach God. You know? And, and, I, and I believe the same holds true on uh, Christian side. You know? I know where my direction is, and hopefully we'll meet at the end. That's why I get really, you know, I'm kind of weirded out when these extremists, even extreme Christians, start, you know, putting up these barriers According to the AINA, the debate among Muslim theocrats seemed to be whether Morsi and his Islamist thugs are pious enough to destroy these symbols of paganism. 
You see, the Muslim world recognizes no authority, no ancient civilizations, no human construct, and no societal endeavor that is not of Islam, or which has not been uh, co conveniently sub uh, subsumed by uh, Islam. Now, Muslims would recognize no authority, no ancient civilizations, no human construct, no ancient civilizations. I like that because Louis Farrakhan recently, well, last year I think it was, he went and, uh, you know what I might do? I might find that Louis Farrakhan bit and, and upload it and play it tonight. But he says that there's a big cube ship out there, but it's the new uh, Mecca, that he's been on board this ship. And that uh, when the sun starts to rise in the west is when the good Allah shall have its return. Have his return. So Muslims have no ancient civilizations. Uh, that doesn't make much sense. Okay. Once firmly in power, modern Muslims, following in the footsteps of their medieval counterparts, invariably move to destroy everything that is not Muslim. And even ancient Islamists have worked to create any structure, any statue, any historical uh, edifice that might be constructed as symbolic of a religion or time other than today's Islam is an offense to Muslim and must be eradicated. I would love to get a, a, a Muslim scholar on to talk about this because I, I bet you he, he or she would eat this thing up. I don't I don't think they agree with that. Any structure, any statue, any historical edifice that might be construed as symbolic of a religion or time other than today's Islam is is an offense to Muslims and must be eradicated. And that's a strong statement. That's a very, very strong statement. Hmm. All right. So here we go. Um, the scenario has uh, played out several times in recent memory. In 2001 in Afghanistan, the Taliban famously destroyed the Buddhas of the Mayan artifacts described by CNN as among the world's greatest artistic and religious treasures. Well, they did that, uh, you know, when uh, they had the upheaval in Egypt to destroy all, the, uh, all that iniquity. These statues were 1,500 years old, and now they are rubble blown to pieces by Islam regime that considered all pre-Islamic artifacts to be an assault to Islam. And these are extremists, guys. Also on Tuesday, as reported by AFP, Muslims in northern Mali now destroy all world heritage sites within their reach after chipping apart a pair of tombs in Timbuktu. Quoting a Tunisian jihadist who was part of a media committee in the region, AFP reports that the Islamists believe there is no world heritage. It does not exist. The jihadists identified as Amid went on to say that infidels must not get involved in our business. We will destroy everything, even if the uh, militia are inside the mosques. And afterwards, we will destroy the militia in the regions of Timbuktu. Man, this is serious stuff, man. Threats, big time. Why, why can't we all get it done so long, man? Robert Spencer offers a cognitive analysis for Muslim disdain of history and archaeology. Muslims who consider the shrines of saints to be uh, idol, uh, idolatrous, he writes, reasons for the Islamist tradition that if the great uh, that if the grave of Muhammad itself was not to be taken as a place of worship, ne worship, neither should the graves of lesser Muslims become shrines for prayer and pilgrimages. Now, I, I can. I can agree with that to a certain point of view. You know, I mean, you know, Muhammad, I guess, would be their main prophet. You know, the, the, the man that they said spoke to God and wrote the Quran, you know, um, kind of like Christ. And, you know, I mean, there's kind of a toss up there. So, yeah, that would that'd be ideology, which we talk about in the in the Bible as well, but I don't know, I think it's kind of extreme. This is akin to Islamic disdain for the pre-Islamic culture, uh, patrimony of Muslim lands, any manifestation of idolatry, however artistically or culturally significant, is to be regarded with disdain at best. 
If there is a best, is to stay in their worst is naked destruction. This is done with explosives where possible and painstakingly by hand with picks and hose where necessary. Think about this for a moment. To Islamists, the mere existence of a historical structure or a piece of artwork is an assault on Islam because the creation of that indifice can be attributed to today's Muslims. Now, if I remember correctly, Egypt was a law, it was around way before Muslims. I, I, I don't even know if I can read the rest of this. This is, this is just, uh, it's ridiculous. So they want to destroy the pyramids. Ba basically, that's what they want to do because of this assault against Islam. Something that our Star Brothers, who I believe our Star Brothers are our family, helped build. You know, I mean, what it took forty years or something like that to build the pyramids. Some say more. I think with the help with ancient astro uh, anti gravity, probably took forty. But here's a really disturbing, disturb. This is how disturbing stuff is getting. Because I try not to pay attention to it, but it was kind of thrown in my face today. The convert from Islam to Christianity beheaded. Video shown on Egypt TV. Video footage of a covert from uh, from Islam to Christianity being murdered by Muslims has been shown on Egyptian TV, according to Barbados Fund. The graphic incident, which is reported to have taken place in Tunisia, was aired on a program called Egypt Today. The footage shows a young man being held down by masked men with a knife to his throat. One man chants a number of Muslim prayers in Arabic, mostly condemning Christianity. The man holding the knife to Christian Cobra's throat begins to cut, slowly severing the head amid cries of Alu Akbar, God is great. The story continues by saying that the Egypt Today presenter was visibly distressed by the scenes, then referring to the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood and to Salafists who together hold the majority of seats in the country's parliament, he asked, how are such people supposed to govern? The footage of this brutal beheading is the latest alarming indication of the violent threats to religious freedom in the post-Arab Spring Order, said a Barbados Fund spokesperson. The spokesperson added, give thanks to God for our Tunisian brother life and his faith that would not waver even until death. Pray that this witness will touch the hearts of his killers and those who have seen the footage of his death, and they will return to Christ. This was outlined in Revelation that we would see stuff like this. If you think we're not heading into the seven years of tribulations outlined in Revelation, you are sadly mistaken. If you don't think that prophecy is being fulfilled in this time, you are sadly mistaken. This is why I say we need to get spiritually and spiritually centered. We need to understand where our place is, where our where we where we sit ourselves. One of the things I said on my interview yesterday was that nobody can save you but yourself. You know, don't follow me. I'll probably bring you down the wrong path. I said it all along. Never follow me. Follow yourself. If what I say vibrates with you, that sounds kind of funky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> If what I say vibrates with you, I guess we can say that. <laughs> and it's in tune. Well, yeah, come on, let's, let's 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 hang out. But if it doesn't, you know, hopefully we'll see each other at the other end. You know, because I think we all have our own path. Every single one of us. It's taken me a while to understand that myself. I'm going to go on a quick break here. Uh, I'm going to uh, do a quick break, then I'm going to come back on. 
347-324-3704 is our call-in number tonight. Uh, I think I'm going to, I got a couple callers in queue right now. I'm going to look at the, uh, well, it looks like we lost them. Um, so what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a commercial break. When we come back out, we're going to play that John Ward thing. I'm going to probably sit in the chat room with you guys and, 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 and discuss this here. Well, let's do this. We'll, let's go back. Let's just, uh, I'm going to do a little song here and we're going to come back. Come back. This is Mercy. If you're listening to this message, warriors, you are the resistance. Warriors, you are not alone. There are pockets of resistance all around the planet. We are at the brink. Read about it in the Sovereign, newspaper of the resistance. Available now at newsstands everywhere. The Sovereign is a monthly 24-page tabloid newspaper featuring incendiary content about life during wartime in the age of Obama. Warriors, keep to date every month. Remember to read The Sovereign, newspaper of the resistance. Available at newsstands everywhere. This alert is for all you boppers out there in the big city, all you street people with an ear for the action. This is Mercy. If you're listening to this message, Warriors, you are the resistance. This is Mercy. Mine will be the last voice you'll ever hear. Don't be alarmed. Hey, boss! What is it, you buffoon? It appears there's a new show on Freedom Rise Radio. What? This can't be. Does Lord Rothschild know about it? Oh, uh, no. Nope. I wasn't going to. I was, uh, uh, well, inform him immediately. But, Bob, uh, there's something you should know. What is it, you simpleton? Well, uh, Bob, it's about the host. Spit it out, man. Well, Bob, the host is none other than Mac Casey from the Black Market Liberty Show. This can't be. How did this happen? It's an army world order and you and troops. Spread the word. Nobody can listen to this show. Do not tune in. We must stop Mac Casey and keep people from listening to the Black Market Liberty Show at all costs. The new world order is counting on it. The Black Market Liberty Show with Max Casey, Fridays at 6.30 Central and Saturdays at 8 Central on FreedomizerRadio.com. Greetings, this is Blake the Eccentric, and I want to invite you to check out my new show on Freedomizer Radio, The Eccentric Perspective. It's sort of a red pill, blue pill, going down the rabbit hole kind of show, featuring outside-the-box politics, philosophy, and gonzo journalism. But be warned, with knowledge comes responsibility, and you might not see the world the same way again, as I will attempt to open your mind, speak to your common sense, and challenge your critical thinking skills. So please join me Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from noon to 1.30 Pacific Time. Once again, that's Eccentric Perspective, only on Freedomizer Radio. Like it or not, folks, we're in the end times, and the New World Order agenda is advancing. I'm here to be one of the watchmen, and it's time for truth, not to be politically correct. Join me, Johnny Storm, as we go through the news and find the truth behind the lies and deception and seek God's wisdom. With earthquakes in diverse places, superstorms, famines, economic collapses happening worldwide, and wars all over the world, we need answers. Tune in to the Johnny Storm Show on Tuesday and Thursdays, I'm Freedomizer Radio at 3.30 Central Time and get the truth behind the world's lives. Hola amigos, it is I, Jose, again. When my sister Maria and I come to this country, we had no documentation. But thanks to my friend Chayo, he has started a new business called Chayo's Coyote and Document Services. So now I have a social security card a birth certificate say I was born in Minnesota and a driver's license from the state of Oklahoma. So if you too are in this country and need help with documentation, contact Charles Ch Coyote and Document Services. Thank you. All right, guys, we are back here at 7-11-2012. 7-11, God, Slurpee sounds good. <laughs> 9.43 in the p.m. Uh, we are back here, 32 degrees of insanity. I was just checking out the... Uh, the uh, chat room, sometimes I'm not really paying attention. 
and uh, the guts is back. Uh, goes, goes evolution's a lie. He goes evolution's crap, and always will be crap, and that's nothing to be believed. And then he goes, Donnie, be a man, tell everybody evolution is bullshit. That's the evolution. Well, I do agree with you. Evolution is bullshit. Uh, you know, we, you know, to a certain point of view, actually, to a certain point of view, I believe that some people out there evolved from apes. I do believe that. I do believe that. Because that's their mentality. <laughs> really. I mean, seriously. Some of these people, and I think the trolls themselves probably are, you know, very much evolutionists. Because, you know what? Too bad. They, you know, they just, uh, they were, you know, they evolved from apes, and their mentality will always be the same. Uh, but I do believe that we've been, you know, genetically engineered. I mean, really, think about it, guys. I mean, it makes common sense. It really does. I don't, I'm, I'm already negative. I'm all negative blood. You know, so I, I already know that I've got an alien gene. I'm, you know, I've got one of the rarest blood types out there. However, what's funny is my blood type can help every single person out there. Even though I have one of the rarest, I can I can cross the board. Christ was one of those too. Evolution is the new age. I, you know, I was, I was, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I, I I'm just Darwin. How do you need help? <laughs> oh, Minister Kenneth Emanuel is in the chat room. I do need help. I really do. Sometimes I, I need more help than it's really worth. But, uh, <laughs> so anyways, today I want to play, uh, I want to, I want to do, uh, that little, it's about a 30 minute thing with, uh, John Moore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that. And it's, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, Actually, I got somebody in the call. I don't want to find out who this is first. Uh, 865, who is this? Hello? 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 Hi. Who's this? Blue. Hello, who? Blue from Tennessee. Yes, Blue. B L U E. Okay, and where are you from? Tennessee. Tel Aviv? No, not Tennessee, not Tel Aviv. Oh, Tennessee. <laughs> what part of Tennessee? Knoxville. K-N-O-X-V-L-I-E-E. -E. Okay, Knoxville, right? Is that what you said? Yes. Uh, I used to live in Millington. I don't know if you know where that is. No, I'm not a clue. So what can we do for you tonight? Well, you know, you brought up the aspect of um, evolutionism, and I do have an argument there, but, you know, pick an argument and I'll give you an argument. Oh, I'm, not, I'm really not a very argumentative type of person. Well, I'm not trying to give you an argument, but it's, um, pretty much a radio. It has been beyond my, my scope of comprehension. It has been from one side to the left side, backwards and forth. Um, okay. I have a very simple message, and that is, we have to start fighting for our children's rights. Because if we cannot grasp that one simple scape, and life, so we've lost everything. We, if we cannot stick up our for our children's full rights, we've lost everything. Yes. Because is what, what else is there? Well, I, you know, I, I, I can believe I can I can I can run with you on that point. I believe you know I believe that the children, you know, not to sound uh, uh, mushy mushy, but the children are our future. They really are. Uh, and that, uh, you know, we, we need to, you know, I, I, I believe we're sending our kids down the wrong roads. But they could say that about us, too. That they sent us down the wrong roads, and, you know, we're just kind of fulfilling that destiny for the others. So, who knows? But with that being said, you know, um, 
I, 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 I want to go back into this John Moore thing uh, as well. You know, I don't know. You know, guys, you know, we were, I'm a Gen Xer, you know, and, uh, you know, I believe that our public school system set me down the wrong path, you know, and I had to find my way back to center. You know, my son, you know, Tony, uh, you know, he's, you know, finally found his center. He's finally got a baby boy, baby girl. You know, he's, he's doing well in his life, but it took him a long time to get back on that path. I mean, I saw him going down the drug path. I saw him going down so many bad paths, and then I just got fed up with him, and I kicked him out. I think I've told you guys that story before. Because I didn't want to see him, you know, go down this destructive path. So I figured the only way I could, you know, knock some sense into him is to do something that he wasn't expecting me to do. So I think the kids themselves need to stand up for them, for their rights. They need to say that, hey, we've been lied to. You know, they have. We have. We all have. But it doesn't give, you know, like today, for instance, I was down by the river. And I'm going to get into this John uh, Moore thing. It might have to be at the top of the hour because uh, I want to play another. I'm going to do another commercial break at the top. But today I was down down at the, the river and, uh, you know, Toto was minding his own business. This little shit came by uh, on his little moped or his little, uh, uh, what are the hell they call those things, uh, motor scooters or uh, scooters. Just a scooter. It doesn't have a motor, so it's just a scooter. And, you know, he's cruising along. Toto just kind of barked at him because, you know, he was not supposed to be on his scooter. And she's like, fuck you, man, to me. This little shit was like nine years old. I said, excuse me? What did you say to me? He said, fuck you. And I'm like, I'm like, fuck you. That's really good language to your elders. Like, do, do you kiss your mom with that mouth? And he's just like, well, you know, your, your dog should have freaked out. And I'm like, you shouldn't be riding that in this area. It says no bicycles right there. He's like, yeah, that's what it says, no bicycles. I'm like, come on. I mean, are we going to be that literal, kid? Some of these kids, you know, and I, you know, I was probably a foul mouth little shit too, you know. But I did have a lot of respect for my elders. I had a lot of respect. And I think that's another thing with these kids today. Is kids, kids are becoming very foul mouth. Uh, and think their shit don't stick. Excuse my language. But it's, it's true. It's very true. So anyways, guys, if you want to join us tonight, 347-324-3704, 347-324-3704. Also, you can join us in our Freedomizer uh, chat room. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into a real quick break here. I'm going to uh, do... Uh, uh, a couple commercials, uh, some of the uh, other um, programs on our show, and uh, one of the programs uh, that we have on our on our wonderful network here is uh, Sound Doctor Ministries. So here's Minister Ben Emanuel. Fed up with the lies, manipulation, and deceptions of everyone else's opinion. Tired of being ridiculed and conforming to other standards because your standards are based in biblical principles. In truth, there is liberty. Blessings, Freedomizers. Join me, Servant Emmanuel, right here on the Freedomizer Radio Network as I host the Sound Doctrine Christian Ministries program every Tuesday and Saturday afternoons, noon Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, for truth according to the Holy Scriptures. With like-minded individuals who are not so heavily minded that they are no earthly good. Let us stand together, freedomists, not in their truth, not in our truth, but the truth according to the word of God. We will have prayer, biblical studies, occasional guests with world news, with issues that are of concern to the body of Christ. Come and fellowship with us as we stand against the coming new world order. Blessings and peace to your home. Because I gave him like heart on bleach or whatever they call it, what they call it. Uh, anyways, guys. So what I'm going to do here is uh, um, 
I got Mark on the phone. Uh, I'm going to bring Mark on real quick here, and then we're going to go into that that John uh, Moore thing here as well. Hey, John, or Mark, welcome to the show. How are you doing, Donnie? Good evening. Do what's good. Doing good. good. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm calling. I haven't seen any videos. You got any new stuff coming out? What's what's on the what's on the menu? You know, I've I oh, it's on the menu. It's on the menu. Yeah, well, I've been busy. Uh, you know, just kind of enjoying summer. You know, uh, we're kind of in this null period. Uh, astro- astronomically right now, uh, between now until probably, uh, early August. But, uh, that, uh, uh, on the 14th of July will be the one year anniversary of that, uh, video I did, uh, with the, uh, three guys that show up on the, um, uh, down in Antarctica and they're like pointing up at the, uh, up at the sky and they're in those radiation suits. Remember that video? No, I don't. I don't. I see. I, I just, you know, listener. I just, I just been following you maybe the last, I don't know, maybe four months. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, there, there months. is a, a vi- there's a video that I did last year, uh, and it was a very, I mean, it, I mean, everybody ran with it. I mean, Marshall Masters ran with it. Uh, Paul Begley ran with it. Uh, uh, what's his name uh, down there? And uh, uh, oh gosh, he's big time guy down in. Uh, uh, Arizona, I can't think of his name off the top of my head right now. But a lot of people ran with that video and it was, uh, it was, it was called the Brown Dwarf and Personal Witness, uh, Antarctica staff, Personal Witness. And, uh, so we're heading into this, um, this, this time now and that's what I'm going to be playing here, uh, this John Moore, uh, uh, right, I heard of him. He, he's yeah, down in the Ozarks. Uh, yeah, he's down in the Ozarks and, uh, he was, uh, this morning he did a radio show in regards to some insider information on Nibiru, and I'm going to play that for everybody here uh, coming up now. It's about 30 minutes long, uh, and it's talking about basically the, the government is now sending, the military at least is sending out information to the families on the West Coast and East Coast and in the Gulf region to get ready for a bug out and basically have uh, just uh a small amount, you know, basically carry on luggage right. type of stuff ready uh, to bug out after uh, well, you, one of the time. You, 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 know, you know what I do? I, I'll tell you what I got. I've been storing, I listen to those peppers. I store uh, water. I get my plastic bottles. I put a little chlorine yep. in there. I got a little portable generator. Look at the East Coast was uh, blown out uh, for one week. They didn't have no electricity. So, I mean, I'm not saying going ahead and digging bunkers and filling up with food. But you gotta have at least for a week or two. You gotta have a little bit in case you have a power outage or something. You know? Yep. Oh yeah. You have to. We have to be. Uh, we have to be prepared at least for a week, a uh, week if not two. Uh, and you know, and, and that's not too hard to do. It really isn't too hard to do to keep keep yourself stocked up on stuff. You know, and non perishables and uh, you know water and make sure that the you know that your water is good. Uh, you know, yeah. But. Uh, you know, also, you know, I, I believe in humanity tw- as well, and uh, especially where I'm here in Reno, where I'm at, I feel feel pretty safe because they're talking about, and we're going to go into it here, uh, but he's talking about, you know, basically anywhere between 50 miles to 100 miles inland from the from the oceans is where uh, there's going to be some some interesting things happening. So, right. you know, I want I want everybody to hear something different. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I talk about it all the time, but I want to, you know, hear it from a real left-wing Christian extremist yeah. talking about this, which is well, which is very. very I, don't know, I don't. I don't know if I would agree with the extremist. I think what he is is he's a uh, he's probably a assembly. You know, he's a he's a he's a preacher and he's out there yeah. in the Ozarks where they, where the assemblies are, and he's you know, and he's he's hunkering down and he's he's getting ready, you know, and. Uh, and and that's fine. Everybody has their choices to make, you know. Exactly. Now myself, you know, there's a scripture that says, "Take no thought for tomorrow. What are we going to eat? What are we going to do? For the day of the days will be evil thereof." In other words, there's enough evil to, to worry about than to, to think oh, yeah. about. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, that, well, that, that, that's God, God will God will provide you with everything you need. So have faith in God. And uh, that's the way I look at it. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to, uh, if, if, you know, I said, you know, earlier on the show, I said, we're not even guaranteed our breath tomorrow. You know, we're not. We're not guaranteed our, our breath 
five minutes from now. You know, I could die right on the line. You know, bleh, you know, it probably won't happen, but you know, who knows? Uh, but uh, you know, that's that's. That, I, I just take it minute by minute, second by second. You know, yeah. and I think. Huh? Huh? I, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was saying, I, the reason why I, the reason why I'm attuned to you is because you got the eyes out there, you got the telescopes looking out there, and and I'm not. You know what I mean? You, you're the expert on the, on, on the, you know, the eyes out there looking for different things. And, we're, 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 uh, definitely, we're, we're definitely, we're uh, definitely keeping tuned. I got, you know, I got some stuff I was talking about earlier. I was down by the river taping today and I uh, was using some uh, welder's glasses. Uh, we definitely have a definitive second object underneath the sun uh, because when I move the welder's glasses back and forth, that object does not move. So it's definitely not lens flare. Uh, what it is, I don't know. Well, I'll be I'll be staying tuned. I'll be I'll be standing by listening to John Moore. Sounds good, brother. We'll talk soon. Okay. All yeah. right, guys. So, anyways, uh, we're going to do this John Moore thing. It's about thirty-four minutes and six seconds. Uh, after that is done, we'll do uh, a quick commercial. We'll come back. Fed up with the lies, manipulation, and deceptions of everyone else's opinion. Tired of being ridiculed and conforming to other standards because your standards are based in biblical <laughs> principles. I'm fed up. <laughs> I'm fed up. <laughs> you're you're fed up. I'm fed up. <laughs> why, why are you fed up? Oh man, 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 man! You 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 you're getting me, brother. You're getting me. What's going on? Why am baby? I getting you? <laughs> oh, why man. am I getting you? Tell, tell me tell me more about Chrislam. Oh God. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> I, I really would not. I really don't care about Chrislam. I really. I, I don't think I want to give man. it any airtime. <laughs> man, 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 man. Oh, did, hey. did, did you hear about this beheading today in Egypt? Oh, that's nothing new. That's. That's almost like saying, "Did you hear somebody got shot today in Chicago?" Yeah, I don't know. They put they played this they played this live on. Uh, uh, it was the Muslim Brotherhood who played it live on Egyptian TV of a a Muslim that uh, that uh, converted to Christianity and they beheaded him live on TV today. They hunted him down and beheaded him. Huh. And played it live on Egyptian TV today. I mean, this is this is some serious stuff. Uh, this is stuff that this is stuff that ain't it, been out. It, people, people do not um, people don't realize this is it's no joke, you know. No, uh, no joke. And, and, and you know, because uh, you know, we we we're feeling safe and secure here in America, and I don't see how when we have a Muslim president. Oh, did you, did you? I I unraveled some stuff about his wife today. Did you know that she was that she, her her law license was revoked? Oh yeah, she was disbarred for uh, extortion. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> Back in the nineties, ninety three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> typical, typical black South Side woman. No, nothing surprises me about that at all. Yeah, they go, did you know that our first lady, Michelle Obama, lost her law license in 93? Oh, sure, I knew that. Not. Sure, I saw this on the front page of the New York Times during the elections of 2008. Not. I listened below below from the state of Illinois' website of the court action against Michelle, forcing her to get up for a license. It is understood that in a box attached below under the malpractice insurance, no malpractice report required as an attorney is under court in active status. In other words, Michelle was under court order to give her a license not allow practice law in Illinois, period. <laughs> period. Period. Uh, oh, man. That's, that's, that's some crazy stuff, man. Man. That's some crazy it, stuff. It, it, it's, it's way deeper than that, man. And, you know, and, and I... I'm I'm prayerful, Donnie. I'm I'm always praying for you, for you know, uh, you and all of our listeners at Freedomizer and and what have you, and all of our Facebook friends and uh, just just us. Period, man. Because you know what, we're in this ship, and 
it's sinking guys uh, and uh, all around us is hell and if you honestly do not conform to the things of this world and believe the lies that they have uh, we're going to be hunted guys just like the word of God says you know and we're going to be turned in to the government by our children uh, the word of God tells us so um, it it it's about that time, you know. We're good. We're being we're being hunted, and not just Egypt, but the, all all over the Middle East. The only well, the yeah, only in place Iran, I, Iran, they hung a Christian uh, uh, brother. Uh, gosh, it was a couple months back. I I posted yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. So yeah, you know, public, it, public it, it, and and right, and and that's the thing that always happens. Uh, with Christians, uh, it, all the way back from uh, in the Roman Colosseum days, they oh, they, yeah. they yeah they set us a fire and, and and to give light yeah exactly so that they can watch us be trampled and ate up and dismembered by the lions. You know uh, that that's the way it goes. But you know what? Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't until our until our good friend Constantine made it. Uh, <laughs> There's another guy I have a, a bone to pick yeah. with. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, you know, and, but that's what, but you know what, Donnie? It, uh, if you read the Bible, if you pay attention, especially in the Book of Kings, men always started out well and walking with God, and once they got a following, their head got big, and they all fell off. Just like we see, just like I see, you know, uh, many uh, TV evangelists right today. Yeah. Uh, yep. They started out, they started out, you know, they had a good word, they had a decent message, and next thing you know, uh, and I, the word, the Lord gave me this word for you this morning, and you send me twenty nine ninety five, I'll get it right to you, and this word is for you. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> you, yeah, if, if you I, got, if, I, if I the Lord gave you a today. word for me, huh? I saw this thing today uh, about send twenty nine ninety nine and you can get this anointed holy water. And I almost uh, thought, uh, Peter Popoff. Is that who it is? Yeah. He's like you know, send me twenty nine ninety nine. That man. That man. That man, he he ought to be a billionaire. He's been doing that for a, a, a minute. <laughs> yeah, he ain't just started that one, buddy. <laughs> What's his name, Peter what? Popoff. Uh, yeah, Peter Popoff. Popoff. That, yeah, I, I saw that today. I almost died. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, man. It, it's... Man, it's crazy. It's crazy out there, you know. And and I'm. Is it Pentecostal? Papa, I'm man, a you know, you uh, your guess is good as mine. He, I he, just said what I'm reading right no, now. No, oh no, he's a uh, he's a lion Costco. <laughs> <laughs> that man don't do nothing but lie, man. He just like the rest of them. They they got their own religion, lying. <laughs> That's their religion. Yeah. What? what who's that back. other? Who's that other one? Who's that other one? It looks like a reptilian. Odin or the uh, the, the young guy with his wife, and they're always t talking about you know that uh, you know we can. He was just what's his name? Odin, John Odin. Odin. Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen. That's it. <laughs> And, and, and brothers and sisters, God understands your struggle, and He's not concerned about <laughs> you know. <laughs> man, please, man, you know. But he, the scary thing is, they got thousands and thousands of followers. Man, look, the Compact Center. The, his church is the Compact Center. He bought the Compact Center, and he bought the Compact Center. Yeah. And the compact center, he have to hold three services every Sunday. <laughs> now, now the com the compact center holds almost a right? hundred thousand. 
Well, the the, the old the old compact center used to be on the the old Summit Arena in Houston, right? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I thought so it was dead now, there. It, 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 it holds almost 100,000 people. So now, if everybody gave uh, $3 each service, every Sunday he walk away with a million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got three services, 100,000 people giving $3 a piece. That's 300,000 services. That's almost a million. That's 900,000 a Sunday. Oh, that's a big, that's a big time business. This big time business, man. This is this is this is so far. This is so far left of God. It's not even funny, man. You now you talking about paganism? <laughs> That's pagan, there, buddy. And all in the name of the Lord. But Matthew seven twenty one. You know those are going to be the people that say that be pleading on the day of judgment. Lord, I I healed the sick. I I cast out demons. I uh, did many wonderful works in your name. And Jesus is going to tell them, depart from me. I do not know you. I don't know you. <laughs> I was you know, today. I was, you know, I was saying this today. I thought I was, I was really, I was, I was really kind of pleading with God today. I said, I said, you know, I, I, I said to Christ, I said to him today, I was, I was, I was worried about my own self. I'm like, man, I, I do not want to be that person where Christ says, I do not know you. And I was like, wait a minute, okay, I hope I brought some people to, to, to you, so you can't come around and tell me that you don't know me if I brought some people to you. <laughs> Boy, who, I'm going to be praying for you, bro. You can let I them know, talks go. But I, was, I, was, I did. Let them all quick. I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like uh-oh. I'm going into I'm going into deep dark territory there. <laughs> Man, pride. You you hey Lord, I'm you know I brought some people to you. What you mean you don't know me? That's pride, man. No, uh, we can't. Uh, we can, we can't get caught up in that one, Donnie. I, I pray against that one all the time. Humility. That oh, was uh, the ministry's post for today. Uh, uh, humility uh, on oh, Sound man. Doctrine's Facebook page. Uh, that was that was the post today. Yeah. Did, did, did you see it? I I put it on your page. Did you read it? I haven't read my, my Facebook page at all today. I haven't read it at all today, so I haven't even I haven't even had a chance. I, oh, so yeah, so why did I even be bothered listening at your program if you don't even go to your own page? Because I woke up this morning, got out, was hotter than heck, and needed to get the heck out of this house and go down to the water and enjoy it. <laughs> Okay, I, 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 I had to go look at Donnie. Heat exhaustion. <laughs> oh man, it was okay. so hot in the house. I was, I literally woke up at like ten this morning. And I'm like, it was already a hundred degrees outside, and I mean, literally, I mean, I have no AC in this house at all. So I've got everything kind of like, you know, I, I've got all the windows kind of, you know, masked so that the, you know, it kind of keeps it cool in the house. And right. I was just, I got to the point. I was like, I gotta let this go. I gotta get out of this house. Man, so you better run down there to Walmart with you a hundred dollars and get you one of the air conditioners and, and do one room and stay in that room. Nah, I, I, it's only going to be another couple weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, can, I can handle another couple. Weeks. Yeah, right. Uh, our August promises to come in just as hard as July. Yeah, I know. I know. I can handle. <laughs> I can handle six weeks. I, yeah, hey man, okay. it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to know that I got a river right down the right down the street. I could jump in that thing anytime. And Toto and I had a wonderful time playing in it today. We had a good time. We're gonna actually go get a tube tomorrow. We're gonna go. We're gonna walk like all the way up the river. And we're gonna tube down. <laughs> I'm like getting super tan. I'm like super tan right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting as dark as you. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Good luck with that, bro. That one. Yeah, I don't think I'll, I don't think I'll ever get that dark. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 if if that happens, you you better go get you some help. I see. I told you you need help. <laughs> 
I've been listening. Uh, what's the, uh, now, what what do you want to know about the pyramids and paganism? The hell. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Uh, oh, you were just venting at the beginning of the show. Okay. I was All just right. venting. I was just venting. I, I mean, I, mean I, I, I just, I don't know. I, 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 I. The whole pyramid thing, the whole paganistic thing, I don't know, don't really care. I really don't. I don't. <laughs> I, you know, let them do it. Let them, let them idolize what they want. <laughs> I don't care, you know, but I, you know, I believe yeah. that, the, you know, I believe the pyramids have some sort of significance. And, uh, what I found really odd, though, is that, uh, the pyramids point to the same area in space as, as the Bondamalis does. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, exact same spot. Pretty much. It's off by a few degrees, but that's it. Mm, yeah, well. Really weird. You know, really strange. The, you know, uh, I was reading, uh, uh, look, have you have you talked to Chris yet? Chris. Tyson. Oh, Chris Tyson? No, I haven't, yeah. I, I, I haven't heard from him. Man, I, man, see, because you know more than me about all this stuff, man. I show with you. I, that would be a great show, man. I, I'm, I, I'm going to promote that show on my page, my, the ministry's page, on the ministry's <laughs> website. Man, because I, I, that would be great. Because I had a good show with the guy, you know, yeah. and he revealed a lot of stuff. And just what you're talking about, stuff like, you know, it's pointing to this area in space and whatever. He come up with stuff like that about the Washington Monument and what have you and everything you, do you know you know the RFID chip uh, that the government is uh, talking about uh, uh, implementing uh, in the next year do you know that that chip is connected to a supercomputer in Brussels that's called the beast you know somebody told me something about that something in, in Brussels is yeah. called the Beast? It's called, that's what they named it, the Beast. Brussels. See, they're not hiding. They're not hiding one little bit whatsoever. And it makes sense, you know, uh, uh, that, you know, Christ couldn't tell nobody, look, they're going to have this computer, <laughs> you know, and it's going to be, uh, uh, it's going to distribute the market of beast. He, he, he tied it all in together because he tied into, you know, at JFK, they, uh, uh rolled out the holograms that talk to you now. Uh, and, and he tied that into what the book of Revelations talks about, the image of the beast, because, you know, Satan isn't omnipresent like God. That's how come he has his minions and demons and what have you, you know, and utilizes so many different people. Uh, because he, you know, he's not all powerful like, like, you know, our heavenly father is. So, uh, and this is one of the, uh, one of the avenues that he's going to use. And they rolled it out last week at, uh, Kennedy airport at the hologram that actually talks to you. Really? Yep. A hologram that actually I'm, talks to you. They rolled, they rolled that, that out in and Kennedy Airport, yep, he, he told us about it uh, last week on the program when I did my second interview with him. I'm telling you, 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 need, you need this guy. You all, oh, man, I would just love, you know, because you all could do um, have, have so one old, night yeah, on I, here I, I, and the next night on True Frequency and Buddy Listen. You, it, it, it would be a learning experience for us all, for us all, Donnie, really. Well, well, have them get hold of me. Uh, you know, it's or, or I'll try to shoot them an email or something. You know, you know I have no problem to bringing them on the air with me. I, you know, it's just, you know, I, I think it's it, it would be a good balance uh, to uh, have uh, that sort of perspective. I, I I did a little research on the guy. He seems to have his uh, his uh, all of his ducks in a row. Uh, and, and there you uh, go. You know, I, yeah. So you know, I I. I I, I would be very interested, you know, and this is why I want to play this this John Williams thing because here's this John Williams or this uh, uh, not John Williams, uh, oh, oh, anyway, well, John Moore. Uh, John Williams is the 
conductor. Uh, John Moore thing about Nibiru because it's uh, some very interesting stuff. Are you, are you going to be around for a while? Uh, uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I, I can't promise I may fall asleep on you at any time. All right. <laughs> well, you know, here's the invite for you. Here's the invite for you this this, this Saturday, if you want. Saturday uh, evening. Uh, what time? What time you get started? I start at nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. So that's time. eleven o'clock my time. Yep, and I'm just going to go for a couple hours. But I, I was thinking of having you as a guest on. Uh, I wanted, I was going to call you anyways tomorrow. I'll be there. I got you on the line. All right, let's do it. I'll be All there. right, so uh, there you go, guys. Uh, Saturday night, Mr. Kenneth Emanuel and myself uh, on Truth Frequency Radio on my uh, brand new show, uh, Freedom, uh, Truth Frequency Radio, 32 Degrees of Insanity Special Edition on Saturday evening. So uh, my special guest will be Minister Kenneth Emanuel. It'll be, uh, uh, we'll probably go into some deep stuff. I want to cover this, uh, this beast thing. Uh, I had heard about that in Brussels, Belgium, but I forgot all about that. I heard about that a long time ago. I forgot all about that thing uh, with the RF, RF, RFID chips as well. Uh, let's see here. I think I'm going to take a quick break here. Come back. i got a couple people in the queue, and uh, we'll be right back here at 32 Degrees. Of insanity. Ivaki Hadi in Reno, what are you doing on Freedomizer Radio on Thursdays 10.30 p.m. to 12 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and Fridays at 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. Pacific Standard Time? Well, Donnie Gilson, I am going to be hosting the heated conversation. But you already know this because you co-host. I sure do. Please join us as we talk about UFOs, the universe, comets, health and herbal medicine, paranormal activities, weather, planets, asteroids, earthquakes, spirituality, harp, secret societies, and current events. I think we should add that we always have great guests to pack chat room and very interesting conversations, with your occasional quirky way we give the news. Just remember on Thursdays at 10.30 p.m. to 12 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and Fridays 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The Heated Conversation. Oh, and by the way, we have our always fun chat room at freedomizerradio.com. That's freedomizerradio.com. Just click the chat and listen button. See you there. Hey, folks, Valerie Sergeant Martin here, rebel agitator, Republican renegade, and host of the Valerie Sergeant Martin Show. Twice weekly, I bring you guests who represent the best and brightest of the liberty movement, including best-selling authors, candidates, and legislators, and everyday activists, all patriots actively involved in taking back control of our government, putting power in the hands of the people where it belongs. We also talk economics, finance, international markets, and monetary policy. Anything and everything to do with free markets and capitalism. So friend me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and join me Sundays, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern, and Thursdays, 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern, for the Valerie Sergeant Martin Show. And remember, extremism in defense of liberty is no vice. Hi, folks. Joanne Moretti here, inviting you to tune in at 6 p.m. Eastern, that's 3 p.m. Pacific, Monday through Thursday, for Liberty Underground and Moretti Report, the best 6 o'clock news on the web. Please join me, as well as my great co-host, Jojo Norton, and our chat moderators, Lynn and Anna, as we bring you the latest news, current events, analysis, and an occasional featured guest. That's 6 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Thursday, right here on Freedomizer Radio. Do you believe we are not alone? Are you intrigued by the paranormal and psychic phenomena? Have you ever wondered if there was something abnormal about how the society operates? Do you believe you are here to do more on this planet? Do you feel as though you are living in a prison country or planet rather than a sovereign nation? Does it feel like you never had any constitutional rights or that they are ignoring it as if it wasn't important? Join me, Joanna Johnson, Psychic Empath and Spiritual Warrior, on Illuminating Minds on FreedomizerRadio.com every Sunday night, 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, beginning on January 8th, to move further down the rabbit hole. Hola, amigos. It is I, Jose, again. When my sister Maria and I come to this country, we had no documentation. But thanks to my friend, Chayo, he has started a new business called Chayo's Coyote and Document Services. 
So now I have a social security card, a birth certificate, say I was born in Minnesota, and a driver's license from the state of Oklahoma. So if you two are in this country and need help with documentation, contact Chiros Coyote and Document Services. Thank you. Uh, all right, guys, we are back. Your 32 degrees of insanity, 1026 in the p.m., 7 uh, kind of an interesting show thus far. We had Mr. Kenneth Emanuel. I just have, uh, found out Arizona is in queue. Uh, we are going to bring Arizona on at the top of the hour, at the last hour, uh, as well, because what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to be playing that, uh, radio show with John Moore, uh, this morning, uh, where he's starting to talk about, uh, this insider information about Nibiru. So without further ado, I've been promising this since the start of the show. We're going to go right into this uh, thing. We'll be back here in about 34 minutes, right here at 32 Degrees of Insanity. If you'd like to join us on our roundtable session at 11 o'clock, 347-324-3704, as we bring Arizona and myself back into the mix as we talk about what John Moore has to say about Nibiru. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. This is J.R. Moore coming to you live from deep in the mountains of the Missouri Ozarks on Wednesday, the 11th day of July, year of our Lord, 2012. Welcome to the John Moore Show. I did get a call yesterday from a private trusted source. A very disturbing call uh, that I've been pondering how to report this to you since I got it mid-morning yesterday. And I've decided the best thing to do is just to, well, tell it like it is and not hold back, except to protect my source, of course. Well, here's what's going on. Uh, the U.S. military in the last week has begun conducting briefings for dependents, dependent military families, uh, the uh, husbands and wives of the men and women in the military. These would be the dependents that are stationed on the near the East Coast, the Atlantic Ocean, near the West Coast, the Pacific Ocean, and near the Gulf Coast. And at these briefings, are being told the following, that there's this planetary-sized object called Nibiru that's coming into our solar system. It's going to be causing very severe problems, much more so than it already is, very soon. And that they're being put on standby to bug out. They're being told that there'll be little notice, possibly two weeks or so, before they're given the notice to bug out. Also, by the way, they're being shown a map at these briefings, and they're signing non-disclose agreements before they go into the briefings, before the briefings begin, agreeing to not disclose to anybody else what they're learning. Anyway, at these briefings, uh, these people are being told that... Um, when the call comes, they will only be able to take basically what you would take if you were flying on a commercial airline, uh, a carry-on bag and one check bag with uh, family photographs, uh, personal uh, important papers, documents, and whatever clothes you can fit in. End of story. And they have to abandon all their other clothing, personal possessions, furniture, appliances, automobiles, all the rest of it. Uh, I, well, the automobiles, I'm not sure. They might be bugging out in personal vehicles. That's, that's unclear to me. And it's probably going to be a mixed bag of how people make their way uh, away from these coastlines. I was talking to Tim Spencer about this and my friend, Command Sergeant Major Page, uh, both of whom are veterans of the U.S. military. And... Um, the agreement between the three of us was that these kinds of briefings would not take place a year in advance. They would not take place six months in advance. Four to six weeks is probably pretty likely. Probably not more than three or four months. So that's, that's our belief. I hope we're wrong. I hope that this turns out to be a... Uh, incorrect information if it is well that's great if it's not if it turns out to be correct then you've got your heads up so i asked a question this morning to all of you out there to the several thousand of you listening to me on the morning of july 11 2012 what would you do if you had six years to prepare 
What would you do if he had six months to prepare? What would you do if he had six weeks to prepare? There's going to be different answers to those three different questions, aren't there? Six weeks is a possibility. I hope it's wrong. I truly, in, in, in my heart of hearts, hope that that is wrong. I know that at some point that we will get warnings like this that are viable and will be the real deal. And I, unfortunately, I think this may be it. I don't know. I, I, hope, it, I hope it is not. Uh, my source will be, I'll be talking to my source on a weekly basis for the uh, foreseeable future, for probably several months into the future, probably till the end of this year, most likely. We're going to be getting to go, getting to know each other real well, <laughs> and uh, communicating as we uh, track this thing and see where it goes. Uh, my source doesn't want to hear this either. I mean, we're we're both mature men. We're both Vietnam vets, and uh, he has a life he's put together for himself and his family that he doesn't want to see disrupted. I have a life I've put together for myself and my family. I would just soon not see disrupted. Uh, but reality is, well, it is what it is. And when, I, when we when we get, when we get the call, when we get the the call about the bug out, uh, I will report it the the next show I'm on the air. Anyway, the the. the um, my source told me about this dependent. My source is not the dependent, by the way. The dependent was looking at my map and saying that my map very uh, was very close to the map that uh, the dependent was shown at the briefing. Very close, uh, as as we say, as Tim Spencer would say, close enough for government work. There's going to be deviations between uh, the map that I recreated with working with the three Navy veterans and the map the government is showing. However, uh, it is close enough. Uh, knowing if Aunt Nellie's house is going to be underwater in South Carolina really is not the issue. And no, it's not. The issue is the Atlantic Coast, Pacific Coast, and Gulf Coast will all be underwater, 50 miles inland, 75 miles inland, 100 miles, depending on where it is, wiping out the regions, the homes, the businesses, the schools, the hospitals, where people, where about half this population in the United States live, work, and play, including Washington, D.C., New York, Baltimore, Miami. It's a long list of major cities. That's the point. Not whether Aunt Nellie's house is going to be underwater in South Carolina. That's not really the issue. People that, that live near the Atlantic coast, Pacific coast, Gulf coast, I've had these conversations dozens of times the last 10 years. They, they want to go to a map. They want to look at my map and see if, if their house or if Aunt Nellie's house is going to be underwater. That's not the point. It's human nature. You're going to try to do that. I know that. That's not the point. The uh, briefings I'm getting from my confidential source have the ring of truth to them. They do. And I will do everything I, I need to do to protect my source, make sure my source remains confidential. In fact, the original source does not even know that they are a source. That's how uh, uh, we've kept this uh, confidential. They don't even know they're a source. But that's a good thing. It protects them also. Searching for a date, searching for a time frame is something that's human nature. I get these inquiries all the time whenever I have these conversations with uh, groups of people or individuals. When's this going to happen, John? Well, I still don't know. I know that I'm, I'm reporting as much as I know right now. 
as my friend Professor McCanny would say, he published this in his book, a lady was asking about a time frame, and his response was, well, ma'am, if I give you a date, what are you going to do, buy another case of tuna fish? I feel that's almost a word-for-word -word, uh, uh, quotation there. Last minute preparations uh, means getting down to prioritizing, making a list of priorities, making sure you have the things that you, the essentials that you absolutely must have, your water filter, your food supply, medical supplies, communications equipment, you know, whatever, boots and hats and gloves, fuel stored up, seeds for your gardens, like a, hopefully a, a safe haven. That would be a really, really good thing, a safe haven where you can live and be safe and grow your own food away from a major, major metropolitan area at a good altitude with a decent growing season, plenty of water, and so forth. If you don't have a safe haven, I would urge you to secure one. I think that would be one of the highest priorities a person could ha could and should have, is securing a safe haven for themselves and the people they care about. These next few months between now and October. Do we have six weeks, eight, 12? I don't know how many weeks we've got. Maybe we've got 120 weeks. Make your list of priorities and work the, work the top priority first, then number two, and then number three, and so forth. You can work on two or three priorities at the same time, by the way. You don't have to limit yourself to one at a time. When Dr. Deagle, it's been, what, four years ago now, asked me to make a, a top ten list of things for preparedness, I, it, it, it instantly struck me as something uh, very essential. Uh, a, an excellent exercise. I had not done it before. So I put together my top ten list. And uh, Dr. Deagle and I have talked about that several dozen times the last few years on the Friday afternoon show on Genesis, the third, Dr. Deagle's third hour. Uh, as you regular listeners know that hear me on Dr. Deagle, I do get to talk a little bit. <laughs> um, At some point, uh, my source will let me know, and I will let you know. We have a caller on hold here, Linda in Ohio. Good morning, Linda. Hi, John. Um, I just got my new video, so <laughs> um, I need uh, I needed to ask you. And thank you for uh, updating because uh, I have new listeners listening in, and so you know they haven't heard any of this information before so i know you think it's repetition but well well coming into this cold can be quite a shock to say the least but go ahead linda i understand um are any of the are the lakes being affected i live about 30 miles away from lake erie right or, well um it's just the ocean the, the, the larger the body the larger the body of water the more it, it's going to have a there's going to be problems um uh, what, what's your altitude above sea level, Linda? You know, I used to know, but um, I've been going to work in and out so much, I, I can't remember anymore, but I will find okay. out. Okay. Well, uh, Google Earth, you can find the altitude of any place, above sea level, any place on the planet with Google Earth. Okay. And and uh, what, well, how far away from the Atlantic Ocean are you? Oh, I'm in Ohio. Oh, you're in Ohio. Oh, okay. yeah. And then, okay, well, you're far enough in on. you got mountains between you and the ocean. Um, you're probably going to be okay. Uh, I, I'd want to be some altitude above Lake Erie, uh, maybe 100 feet or so, because there's going to be a lot of things other than just the uh, oceans coming out of their bases. There'll be 200 mile an hour winds. There'll be earthquakes. Uh, there'll be uh, a lot of meteors um, hitting our, hit our, our dear old planet here. Uh, but as far as Lake Erie is concerned, I would just want to be maybe 100 feet or so above uh, the lake level, uh, just for a bit of a margin of safety. What's the nearest city that you're near, Linda, and how far are you from it? Uh, the nearest big city is Cleveland. Yes. 
Cleveland. And how far, how far are you from Cleveland? Oh, about I'd say seventy-five miles. Okay, well that's that's not as far away as I'd like to see, but it, it's uh, not too bad. Um, do you live in a fairly small town? Yes. Okay. Well, these small towns, is, is there a lot of agriculture in your area? Uh, farming, ranching? Uh, yes, there is, as a matter of fact. Okay. All right. Well, people involved in agriculture tend to be fairly independent. It's just part of their lifestyle. Um, uh, most of these men that have these tractors and, and their farm equipment, they take great pride in being able to repair and maintain almost everything on their equipment without any outside help. So you've got in your neighborhood a lot of very independent people who are used to taking care of themselves. That's a real good thing, Linda. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, uh, thank you for the information. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Well, here's a top ten list. I put this together for Dr. Deagle. Um, it looks like uh, September 3rd, 2010. And uh, number one, at least two gravity feed, high quality gravity feed, Berkey water filters, I do offer them for sale on my website. You don't want anything that takes electricity or pressure to work your water filter. Uh, number number two, uh, at least one 30 caliber rifle and 500 rounds of ammunition for each adult. Uh, of course, these skills and uh, to go with that uh, only a, a weapon of any kind. Number three, cast iron cook pots and skillets. You went with cast iron lids. Uh, they can be used indoors. They can be used on campfires and will last for decades if properly cared for. You need a truck or a large van, preferably diesel, uh, so that you can carry people and supplies and equipment. Number five, a heavy canvas tents or tarpaulins for emergency shelter for yourself or for unexpected guests. Number six, 900 pounds of grain per person per year, at least a two-year supply of grain uh, per, per, uh, per person. Properly stored so that when the weevils hatch out in there, there's weevil, there's, uh, weevil larvae in uh, all bulk grains, and so they can't live. You can store it in nitrogen, uh, in carbon dioxide, in a vacuum. Um, there's different ways to do that. Number seven, a comprehensive medical kit, same kind of kit that the paramedics use, and of course the skills to go with it. A good place to get a professional grade uh, paramedic kit is Galls, G-A-L-L-S, Galls dot com. They have, they have uh, the same things that uh, the paramedics use because they sell to the paramedics. Number eight, heavy leather high top boots. This is kind of a generic way of saying buy your boots, trousers, jackets, gloves, hats at the same place the farmers and construction workers buy their clothing and boots. Not the cheap, lightweight stuff sold at sporting goods stores that won't last. That's meant for casual, recreational use. Much of the things they sell at places like Walmart simply aren't durable enough, especially the boots and shoes. I've never seen a pair of boots and shoes at Walmart that I, that I would put any trust in for long-term heavy use. Number nine, vacuum-packed heritage garden seeds. It kind of speaks for itself. Uh, you're going to be growing your own food, uh, maybe growing a little bit extra food so you have something to trade or sell. Number ten, a copy of the book entitled Dare to Prepare. Dare to Prepare by Holly Deyo, D-E-Y-O, available at Stan and Holly's website, standeo.com. The... Uh, Three additional items we put on this list for Dr. Deagle. Uh, number one is a paratrooper bicycle. It's the only, as far as we know, the only full-size folding mountain bike. It is military issue to the U.S. Army paratroopers and the U.S. Ar and the U.S. Marines. Uh, next would be a hand crank AM FM weather band radio. Uh, I do offer these for sale at my website. It's also got a built-in flashlight and a cell phone charger. So uh, it's a pretty good little unit, uh, very compact, and, and uh, just a, a great little unit. And next would, and last but not least, a radiation detector with a gamma ray spectrometer. Um, radiation is part of what we're dealing with here, of course. This Fukushima event is uh, by far and away far worse than what happened at Chernobyl in Russia 
more than two more than 20 years ago far worse so that's the list um, as Linda pointed out Linda from Ohio a few minutes ago we always have new listeners being exposed to this material for the first time can be um, quite shocking a lot of people that it's it's so far away from their belief system that they simply outright reject it and I expect that that's why I go back frequently to the fact and it is a fact scientifically provable fact and I've got some of the evidence at my website that two years ago last month uh, it'll, it was June 12 2010 the Gulf Stream stopped this is one of the many effects of the tenth planet or, or neighbor on our planet is uh, and their secondary effects it's not a direct effect it's a secondary effect back in 1979 when the scientists uh, with our government and the various world governments once they satisfied themselves that Nibiru was real and where it was located with the Pioneer 10 space probe they began making their preparations part of continuity of government contingency planning they also developed their cover story uh, the goal of our government and the world governments is to keep everybody going to work Monday through Friday paying their mortgages, being distracted with professional sports and other things to the last minute and I think they'll be 97 98% successful in that effort because of their Loctite grip on mass media so the cover story they developed was that there's going to be something called human created climate change human created global warming that's the cover story that they decided on 1979 it's not just a fantasy you know, put out by Al Gore Al Gore is the, is the most visible spokesman but this is this is the storyline put out by NASA and NOAA the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration and the um, National Aeronautical and Space Administration that human beings and human activity is creating greenhouse gases which in turn is warming the planet that's a complete fabrication a complete fantasy and even the little children can tell you about carbon footprints now and how we should all have a, a smaller carbon footprint what a bunch of malarkey that is as my friend Lucas would say but they're, they've been wildly successful in an obfuscation and confusing the issues convincing people that things are something that other than what they really are and they will continue to be in the meantime if you become a student of my work a student of Professor McCanny student of Emmanuel Velikowski Zechariah Sitchin and others you can learn the truth the truth is what we're experiencing is, is cyclical in nature it's a long cycle 3,600 years and in, in human a lifetime that's a lot of lifetimes 3,600 years you figure four generations per century times 36 centuries that's a lot of century that's a lot of generations the, the, the uh, cyclical nature of this planet going away from us for 1800 years and coming back towards us for 1800 years in the binary star system I get emails from all kinds of people claiming they have photographs, claiming this, claiming that. Um, it's, it's natural to want to see this thing. Twelve years ago, when I found out about it, more than twelve years ago, I began that quest myself. I came to realize it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter if I see a photograph of it or not. Eventually, uh, I will see photographs that are authentic, and so will you. Eventually, we'll see the real deal. And here in the northern hemisphere by then we'll be down to the final few months if not a few weeks or days before all hell breaks loose I encourage you to now don't get caught up in in a quest trying to find a photograph of the 10th planet of Nibiru it, it, it's pointless it serves no purpose you need to, what you need to do is educate yourself about this cycle where 
every 3,600 years, every civilization on the planet gets mashed down to the mud. Lucas told that story quite well in his first DVD. It's mainstream archaeology, by the way. Very mainstream archaeology. And they, they offer no explanation. Mainstream archaeology offers no explanation for all the civilizations on Earth 3,600 years ago collapsing, coming to a halt. They don't. I know why. And when you educate yourself, you will know why as well. It's very important that you educate yourself. Take the time to do the serious reading necessary. And it's going to take a lot of reading. You know, watching the four hours of my DVD is a good start, but that's all it is. At the end of my second disc, I give a fairly extensive bibliography of books that you can use to educate yourself. It's probably twenty to 30,000 pages worth of reading. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm quite serious here. There's a lot to learn. If you think you can have a comprehensive understanding of these matters by, by watching a four-hour lecture that I put together, well, you're, you're sadly wrong. That's just a beginning point. That's just a teaser. This is all that is. And I would urge you not to make major life decisions and major changes in career or where you live, the part of the country you live, based only on watching my four-hour lecture. I think you need to do more homework than that. I stand behind what's in my lecture. I document what's in my lecture. And it's, it's solid. If it wasn't solid, I would have been hammered into the ground long ago. This first disc came out in the um, first week of September 2008. That's be four years ago um, this September. The second disc came out just a little over a year ago. So, no, I, what, what, I, what I have there is very real and very provable. And I offer some of the evidence there at my website with the U.S. Navy images of the Gulf Stream before it stopped and the Navy, Navy images of the Gulf Stream after it stopped, which, of course, is where we are right now. The Gulf Stream having stopped and its effect on the ocean current and weather is why we're experiencing the unprecedented heat here in North America. There is no precedent. We have weather records going back to about the 1880s in much of the country. This is the hottest year ever recorded in the 130 years or so of record keeping. Unprecedented. And what will happen in the future in terms of weather, I can't tell you. I know, I think I can tell you with some certainty that it will be worse. It will have more frequent, more bizarre, and more dangerous weather events. Extremes of drought and extremes of too much rain. Extremes of high temperatures, extremes of low temperatures. Days where we have two and three hundred tornadoes in one day. Who ever heard of such a thing? Two and three hundred tornadoes in one day. Earthquakes in places that have never had earthquakes. As you see these things increase, become daily events, you'll know, because I've told you so, you'll know that we're getting closer to the end. The end being uh, when Nibiru, the tenth planet, the destroyer, this impacts us to the point where we have a tilt of the Earth's axis, and these oceans come out of their basins. That's what's going to cause the worldwide flooding. A tilt, a, what's called a pole shift. I can't tell you how many degrees it'll be. It's probably going to be in the range of 15 to 20 degrees, something like that. That may not sound like much. That is huge. That is massive. Poles don't need to flip 100, 180 degrees. They don't have to flip 90 degrees. A 15 or 20 degree shift in the poles would be enough to cause uh, coastal flooding on all continents. That's all it would take. And when I use the word all it will take here, that's, that's a massive, massive thing. They have something the size of our Earth tilt its axis 
15 or 20 degrees. One of the one of the hard one of the difficulties I had putting this whole thing together was that the Navy veterans I was debriefing they were they were sitting in the folding chairs getting the information they were not they were not the scientists who put the information together and so the Navy veterans were told what would happen they were not told why it would happen or how they were told these oceans would come out of their basins they weren't told what would precipitate that what would make this happen. I had to find that out myself. That's when I found out there's a bulge of water at the equator, not quite 500 feet above sea level being measured at Cornwall, England, held in place by gravity and rotation of the Earth. Anything that disrupts where true north is, disrupts the rotation of the Earth, will disrupt that bulge of water, which is hundreds of thousands of cubic miles of water north and south of the equator going north and south more than a thousand miles each direction that's a massive bulge of water and once that water is disrupted and if you're near a coastal area well baby watch out you're going to be underwater one of my consultation clients down in texas he's about 80 miles from the gulf coast i arrive at his home and i'm about to get out of the, out of the suburban I look down and I see sand and seashells in all the ground, everywhere, the entire region there, sand and seashells. I looked them straight in and I said, this used to be under the ocean. He got kind of quiet because his wife was standing there and he had not told his wife yet. And he said, yes, John, it was. Much of East Texas used to be under the ocean. Even areas 80 and 100 miles from the ocean where the ocean is now used to be under the ocean and those are those are our seashells they're not the fossil of seashells they are the seashells so it wasn't millions and millions of years ago <laughs> they're just plain old seashells like you'd find next to any ocean right now have been laying there for about 3600 years <laughs> So this is your wake-up call, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I started out the show with a warning. I'm going to wrap it up with the same warning because I know there's people that can't tune in the entire show. One of my trusted private confidential sources tells me that military dependents are, that are uh, stationed with their spouses on the Atlantic Coast, Pacific Coast, and Gulf Coast are now attending briefings. They have to sign non-disclose agreements, briefings that they could uh, soon get a bug out order where they would be ordered to leave these coastal areas taking only uh, the equivalent of a carry-on bag and, and one suitcase abandoning everything else. They may get as much as two weeks notice before they need to get before they get this order they may not get two weeks notice. Uh, this notice would probably we believe be given sometime in the next four to eight weeks four to six weeks we don't know it's not the kind of thing that would be given a year in advance or six months in advance anywhere from a month to maybe three months out maybe as far as October a lot of speculation about what may or may not may not happen in October so we got uh, part of July all of August September and in October It'd be October in about three months close enough so that's your heads up. That is your heads up. That uh, these briefings are being conducted. They're telling these people that planet Nibiru is going to be causing flooding of all coastal areas worldwide. They're being shown a map that's very similar to the map in my DVD, Global Warming, what the government's been telling you, the map that I recreated with the help of three Navy veterans who saw the classified map the U.S. Navy displayed at their briefings going back to 1979 this is your heads up whatever you need to do to, to prior, make your list of priorities start working on it for your uh, preparations you need to be doing it time is of the essence time is of the essence there's going to be some things similar in a lot of these lists and some, some things different we all have our own situation to deal with you know what your situation is just do it 
I do private consultations, by the way, details at my website, thelibertyman.com. If you need some help uh, gaining some clarity and focus as to what you're doing, I'll be glad to do that for you and with you. Hopefully this will blow over. We'll get through this fall, get past the fall elections, and life will be grand. And we can enjoy a, a, a joyous uh, Christmas season where we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus and celebrate uh, January 1st, 2013 with no major problems. I really, sincerely hope and pray that is what happens. I would, I would not be carrying out my duty as a journalist, however, if I held back this information from you. I have a duty and a responsibility as a journalist, which I am, an investigative journalist, to put this information out. What you do with it is up to you. That's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. You all be safe out there. Buy lots of ammunition. Never give up your guns. The code words for today, for those of you behind enemy lines, uh, turn to page 156, first paragraph page 156 first paragraph um be safe and buy last one ammunition all right guys i'm back here 32 degrees of insanity i don't know if i quite agree with a lot of things that john moore said because i hadn't had not listened to that entire uh broadcast until now i do agree with some of the things that he stated I don't believe that we should go out and buy guns and uh, get ourselves ready and locked and loaded. Because uh, I think that's what the uh, what they want us to do. They want to find out who's arming themselves. They want to find out who's stocking up, who's buying all of this preparation stuff. Because those, my friends, are going to be the people that are first going to be targeted. And it's very simple to figure this out. Anybody with a credit card going out and buying stuff, preparation stuff on the line, or doing any of this, that is a great way to know exactly where your address is and that you are a prepper. So I would be very cautious on how you purchase these things. That's one thing that they don't talk about. I'm going to go into a quick break here. We're going to bring Arizona online with me. If you'd like to call in for the last hour of the three of the show, three four seven three two four three seven zero four. We'll be right back after this message. You know the constant SNL Chupacabra insurance, just in case the Chupacabra comes. Ay ay ay, <coughs> la Chupacabra. Oh, yeah, I, 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 La Chupacabra. Yeah, go get your Chupacabra insurance, just like your Nibiru insurance. You can buy it right here on www.ursuadams.com, twenty nine ninety nine for your Nibiru insurance. Come on over. <laughs> twenty nine ninety nine a month. Nibiru insurance. I should get into that market. I bet you I can get some stock. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I tell you, you know, uh, guys, 32 degrees of insanity. It is 11 away at the p.m., 7 11, 2012. We're going to bring on Arizona here in a moment, but Arizona's a, uh, been a great contributor to this uh, whole aspect in regards to the Bureau. However, you know, someone sent me a link uh, here from the worldwide, uh, what is it here? Uh, world, weekly World News. Yeah, the Weekly World News. NASA scientists have reportedly confirmed that planet Nibiru will collide with Earth in July of this year. The Nibiru collision with Earth in 2012 has been predicted for a long time, but astrophysicists, cosmologists, and astronomers around the world have now come to a consensus that Earth will indeed collide with the planet, which lies just outside Pluto. Okay. Wrong. 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 Nibiru in Babylonian astronomy translates to the points of transition or the planet of the crossing, especially of rivers, rivers, crossings, ferry boats, blah, 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 blah. You know, the one thing that I find interesting about this is recently Hubble Telescope, I think it was just today, spied a fifth moon around Pluto. Now, it says, Los Angeles, there's something lurking around just at the icy dwarf planet Pluto, a fifth moon. A team of scientists using Hubble Space Telescope 
said Wednesday they have discovered the tiniest moon yet around Pluto. That brings the number of moons to five. You know, somebody said mentioned earlier, that's not fair. You know, Pluto is not even considered a planet, but yet it's got moons. That Pluto, so how does that work? I want to know how that works. Uh, something that's not supposed to be a planet has moons. We'll talk about Arizona about that one, too. The mini moon is estimated to be 6 to 15 miles across. That's more like an asteroid to me. Uh, smaller than the one that scientists spotted last year, which is 8 to 41 miles across. Pluto's largest moon, Charon, is about 650 miles across. Now, this is the thing. Going back to the planet of the crossing, the ferryman. Who is the ferryman to the underworld? Bueller? Bueller? Sharon. Sharon was the one. Remember, he grabbed the, 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 uh, the, the, the token, and you were able to go to the underworld to see Hades and all of that? Interesting that Pluto's moon was, is called Sharon, and now another planet or fifth moon has been discovered, which I think is part of the Nibiru system, coming to the ferryman to ask for passage. Could it be? We know that uh, I showed you that weird anomaly next to the moon in my last video. It looked like I was rotating. Some people say, well, it's just lens flared. Well, guess what's right between the moon right now and and uh, what planets are right between the moon right now? You got Pluto on one side and Neptune on the other. And Uranus right over by it, too. Rogue planet. Yep. Things to think about, guys. Things to think about. With that being said, I'm going to bring Arizona onto the show. Arizona, welcome to the show. So what's up? Arizona? Are you there? I, I hear you. All right. There you go. So what do you think about yeah. that John Moore thing? Well, I personally don't think they're going to get six weeks of warning. I think maybe they might be lucky if they get six days of warning, and more than likely it will be two days of warning, and uh, they were told a, a month and a half ahead of time so that that way they'd have time to decide what they wanted to put in their bags. Mm -hmm. And uh, that six weeks of warning is nonsense. I mean, why would they give them six weeks of warning knowing that they'll blab the whole thing to everybody they ever knew prior to uh, being uh, packed up? I think I think they'll be lucky if they get one or two days of warning. They'll get called and say, it's time to go, and they'll have 15 minutes to get ready to head out. Well, that's how they uh, did. I mean, any, any, anything that I ever did while I was in the military, I was never given any notice until it was, until it was time to do it. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, uh, you know, Knowing how these guys operate, I don't believe that they'll get two days of warning. I mean, they might get one day or six hours or, you know, a half day or one day or two days. I don't think they'll get more than two days. I mean, really, do you? Uh, no, I, I don't think, I don't think that, I don't think we're going to know for, you know, they might, I think they have a good idea what the trajectory of this thing is, but I think we're not really going to see it until it's right up on our ass. Well, I'll tell you what. That would be my guess, that we won't see it until it's on us. But I will tell you one thing. We'll have some really good warnings if everybody's looking up and paying attention. First off, they'll notice red dust on the windshield of their vehicles. And at first, it'll be light dust, indicating that it's uh, uh, 10, 15 hours away. If they notice that the dust is real noticeable on their windshield, they can bet that it's in less than 10 hours away. If they have heavy red dust on their windshields, it's only a matter of hours away, and they'd better immediately take cover because they're out of time. It's too late to decide to load this or that up. Uh, I don't think that uh, I don't think there'll be a lot of warning, but uh, you know, when we were looking at it on the Hubble, this red dust field appeared to be going out at least as far 
is maybe two times the size of the planet. So, uh, yeah. you know, that means that it's probably a few hundred thousand miles going out into space around it, all the way around it, which means that just before it arrives, which will be a matter of hours, we'll start seeing red dust coming out of the atmosphere onto everything. Where And, of course, a vehicle windshield would be the best thing to spot it on because then you'll be able to see its true color and realize that you're seeing the red iron oxide dust from it. And that'll be probably between that and the earthquakes, and uh, I think probably uh, as, it, as it approaches, we'll start to hear the electromagnetic interference between it and us, uh, maybe see bizarre events in the sky with the clouds and, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, uh, colors flashing around in the atmosphere. Uh, 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 there, there'll probably be quite a variety of warnings that it's approaching and that it's within hours of uh, passing. Uh, you know, uh, the, the vision that the Lord gave me on it, I had no warning at all. I was at Walmart when it happened. So, uh, but I did get to see Walmart completely destroyed as the earthquake started. <laughs> well, you know, I, 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 you know, I was, I was, I was, one of the things that he mentioned in that thing was about this, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the equatorial bulge, this water bulge down at the equator. That would oh, make well. a lot of sense. If, if we well, do, no, if you know we there's a bulge at the equator. Yeah, well, we know there's a gravitational bulge. Sure, I that, I mean, the Earth is spinning at 24,000 miles an hour. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, or 1,000 miles an hour, so you're going to have a bulge of water at the middle. That's common yeah. sense. Yeah, that's that, uh, but it would make a lot of sense if we flipped at, you know, 10, 15 degrees. Even a 10, 15 degree shift would displace that water. Well, yeah, but it's going to be a lot more. Uh, you know, the CIA people I talked to said that they're expecting at least a uh, 220 to 230 degree roll, maybe a little more. Uh, they fully expect the center of the United States to be at the equator when it's over. That kind of calls in the line of uh, what uh, Ed Casey talked about back in his back in his vision. Well, we know it's going to be at least 180 because, uh, 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 what is it, uh, Isaiah 24 says that I'm going to turn the world upside down. That right. isn't a 90-degree pole shift. That's a 180. Well, that's a 180. Yeah, that's 180. Yeah, that's a 180. And, so you're, and, you're, uh, saying, you're saying a 260, 280-degree flip? No, no, no. I'm saying uh, 220 to 230. That's what they're guessing. But Which then again, you got to remember. That's still a pretty good clip. Yeah. Well, you know, this thing's going to go by and give us a spin, and that's where we're going to supposedly stop. Uh, they told me they ran ten thousand case scenarios on the on shifting the planet upside down. They did it ten thousand times. Uh, they did it on their base on Mars. They did it on their base on the Moon. They did it on the Earth. They tried different locations to see what they'd come up with, and it averaged out at 220 to 230-degree roll. So, you know, uh, I think probably uh, them knowing the trajectory isn't, I don't think that's a matter of question. I'm sure they know the trajectory. I'm sure they know the exact minute it's going to show up. You know, I mean, uh, uh, I've heard a lot of stories that I would only tell you in private about this because it's so far over the top, most people would go into immediate denial if they heard it. So, you know, the most I can say is that they better be expecting at least a 180 to a 220 degree pole roll when this happens. And as far as that bulge around the center of the planet, I got news for everybody. This thing is going to do a very fast roll, and that water is going to go everywhere. The Lord warned you, the oceans will roar from pole to pole. Is there some part of that nobody understands? Yeah. What's the average uh, depth of the ocean? The average depth? Yeah, what's the average depth of the ocean around 10, the world? 
10,000 feet. It's a it's about two two and a half miles. That's well, the average the depth of the ocean. Although the depth does increase at the equator because there's spots where it's averaging seven miles deep. So that right. tells you there's a bulge at the center of the planet. Which would be, uh, man. Now just imagine the North Pole rolling into the position of the South Pole. That means that the North Pole has got to go through that bulge before it can reach its final resting place. So we're going to have seven miles of water doing some serious washing around on the land. So let me let me ask you this. If we did a 220-degree pole shift, would that be an instantaneous pole shift, or would no. that be a... No, it's going to uh, be, as I understand, it's going to happen over the course of uh, uh, half an hour to an hour. And actually, they said 28 well, that's pretty, minutes. That's pretty instantaneous. <laughs> that's pretty fast, yeah. That's uh, pretty fast. Uh, we're going to see probably, we're going to probably see a uh, uh, 400 mile an hour wind on the surface. Uh, we're going to see big time water splashing around. Uh, we're going to see earthquakes that are so bad that it'll set off every uh, volcano ridge on the entire planet. Every volcano ridge on the entire planet will be uh, going off. The tectonic plates will be being jerked apart by probably miles apart as the surface of the Earth will be like a bowl of jello. It'll be flexing around so hard that every tectonic plate everywhere on the planet will open. The volcanoes will be shaken so hard that they'll start erupting. Uh, it's going to be one horrific scenario after another. That's why I've been telling people, you know, uh, the Lord told me that we're going to see a famine starting this winter. It's going to go all the way through 2013, uh, through the winter of 2014, and then the weather will clear enough for about three months in the middle of 2014 for maybe the survivors to grow some crops and they'll have like a three-month window of, of weather that breaks enough for sunshine. And then they'll go into the winter of 215, and then the skies will be cleared up by the spring of 215 to where they can plant and get a full growing season. But we're talking a year and a half here with no food, okay? So that means everybody out there that's being told to get a year's worth of food they better take that to heart and go buy a year and a half or two years worth of food. I tell everybody to get three years and make sure they've got enough for their dogs, their kids, their family, for everything that they could possibly imagine, and especially cold weather gear. Because right after this pole shift happens and all the craps in the air from the volcanoes, the war, and all the other stuff that's going to be happening, uh, it's going to be raining and it's going to be cold, and it's going to be wet, and they're going to need full-blown bad-weather farm gear in order to uh, go outside and travel the around. They'll need good rain gear, good warm-weather gear, because it's going to be cold, and it's going to be cold for quite a while, for a year and a half at least. When you've been talking about what's this, that? I was, I was, when you've been talking about this, I started thinking about a passage of the Bible uh, Matthew, Matthew 24, 15 through 22, where Jesus said, You will see what the prophet Daniel told you about, the terrible things that cause destruction. You will see that in the holy place, understand carefully. When you see that, escape to the hills. If you are on the roof, don't go into your house and get your things. If you are in the field, don't go back to get your coat. The time will be terrible for pregnant women or women nursing babies. Pray that doesn't happen during winter or on a Sabbath rest day. That time will be full of much trouble. Since the beginning of the world, the world has not seen that much trouble and will never again see that much trouble unless the time was short. No one would continue to continue safe, but God has mercy on his chosen people, and the terrible time will be short. So that's I, 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 I'm confused. Yeah, you're looking at hell on earth here. This ain't going to be no joke. This is going to really eliminate a lot of people because uh, either they didn't know about it or they didn't believe or, right. you know, whatever the case may be. 
the uh, the people that believe in what the Bible says will do much better than the ones that don't because the ones that don't won't make it at all because they won't be nowhere near close enough to being ready. Right. It's going to be a real shame for them because uh, I'll tell you, uh, uh, the Lord told me that when Nebiru rules the planet upside down, it's going to kill uh, 4 billion people. And uh, that's that's the first day. And uh, the rest will survive on, but very few survivors will still be around when the weather finally gets good enough to get a full growing season because they just uh, uh, were not prepared enough to make it. And that's going to—that's it's going to eliminate a lot of people. I mean, I wouldn't be under these underground facilities that uh, all of these uh, elite people think they're going to hide out in because they're going to be torn to pieces by the uh, flexing of the planet. I mean, the crust of this planet is going to really act up big time. And uh, there won't be any survivors in those underground facilities. Uh, that's the reason why uh, a lot of them that don't give a shit, they're planning to ride it out on Mars. But I got news for them. Mars is going to do a lot of suffering, too, and there won't be any well, survivors I, there either. Yeah, I got a, I got a, I got a feeling that this thing is going to be right between Mars and us. It's going to yeah. cause... Major horrific, uh, horrific problems with Mars as well. I mean, I mean, if you think you're oh, going to sure. go hide out on Mars, good, good luck on that. Well, you know, I'll tell you what. Uh, I really don't think that uh, the survivorship of this will be real high because of the denial. The level of denial in this country is obvious by Department of Homeland Security planning to uh, fight everybody. Uh, the, the United States government has been terrorizing everybody around the world forever and ever. The churches are all in denial. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, the Chinese, they take babies and cook them up into stew and stuff. Uh, you know, there's so well, much evil would, going on. I don't, know if, you, I don't know if you, if you heard my, uh, I had, uh, uh, I did this little bit with this guy named Rabbi Finkelstein. Where Rabbi Finkelstein, you know, said that the, you know, that they're using uh, McDonald's meat to uh, that uh, young children have been uh, ground up into McDonald's uh, meat, and that uh, they're using this to uh, to feed the goyim, and that uh, you know that uh, they're doing this in in the uh, in uh, uh, in instruction by Lucifer. Well, you know that you have to understand something uh, evil has taken over this planet and that's why he said about the churches being asleep the churches have oh. not protested this at all and uh, they're going to pay dear for having kept their mouth shut and been politically correct this is the one that's going to cost them their ass and obviously they don't care and as far as mcdonald's doing that i wouldn't doubt it a bit because i wouldn't eat their food if they gave it away free I wouldn't eat it at most of them because most of them have all been busted at one time or another for putting crap in their food. You know, I mean, uh, look at all this uh, uh, women's products that you buy here in the stores with collagen and all this other crap in it. That It, it never occurs to any of these women. That collagen is uh, from uh, uh, shredded up babies, and that's where they get the collagen from uh, all of the afterbirth and uh abortions that are done all over the planet uh the stuff is in practically everything uh that's the reason why monsanto and the rest of them don't want nothing labeled they're scared to death that people will find out what the, what this company's been up to and uh for the president and all the rest of these people uh own part of monsanto uh it's you know just one evil thing stacked on top of another and all of these people that have been condoning all of this stuff, they don't talk about it. They just, you know, they own stock in the companies, and they think they're getting rich, and what they're actually doing is getting ready to die, and they don't even know it. I tell people all the time, guess what? You're probably not going to be alive this time next year, so uh, don't worry about what you're doing, you know, because if you don't come to the Lord, you're history. And that pretty much applies to you too, my friend. You had better make sure that you're as close to the to the uh, 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 man as you can get, because if you aren't, you will be one of the people that don't survive. Oh, that's, only that's, the people that are real close to him are going to be protected. 
that's what I, uh, that's today, that's what I was, I was down by the river today, and I was, you know, I was kind of pleading for, you know, for my soul today, and yeah. I was like, you know, I, I was, I was sitting here, I'm like, you know, I know I've, I've tried to do the best work that I, that, that I can, I know I've got my faults, I know I've got, you know, things that I've done wrong in my past, I know that, you know, there's, there's nothing I can do to turn back the table of the time, you know, but. Well, I'll tell I you what, be, getting on I your knees be, and begging for oh, repentance is a I good did. start in the right direction. Oh, I did. I did. And and I have done that several times. You know, I have gotten down literally on my hands and knees crying. And, you know, I mean, I, you know, I was, you know, baptized, of course. I was rebaptized in 2006 when I said yes to Jesus Christ uh, for the first time as an adult, you know. And, uh, you know, so I, I know what I, you know, that I'm, I'm doing the best I, that I think I can to be, to be one with the Lord, you know. Well, and as I say, me, nobody can save you but yourself. So you need, that's to right. Right, you need to get right and find your own path to the Lord. And that's what I've been trying to tell everybody. I'm like, you know, that's why I was today. I was sitting down with the river. I'm just like, you know, I know I brought people to you, Lord but I hope there is a spot for me because I know you don't give out any guarantees. No, he doesn't. And But you know what? A lot of people don't understand how easy it is to get close to the Lord. All they've got to do is is realize that he died to, to mm-hmm. wash their sins away, and if they yep. would just repent of their sins and talk to the Lord every day, mm-hmm. eventually he'll start talking to them, and he'll start answering them, and he'll start mm-hmm. listening. But they've got to convince him first that they're worth listening to and that they're not BSing him because he doesn't, you know, he's he's not like a Democrat. He doesn't fall for BS. He knows exactly what's in your heart. And if you're evil well, he in knows. your heart, you've got to get rid of that. Yeah, he, he definitely knows your heart, you know, and he understands, yeah. that, you know, and, and, and he understands that we are all still sinners. We all are sinners on this place, on this planet. We all are sinners. But he said his oh, blood. Yeah. Came down here, he shed his blood on that cross for us. It was the only way it could be done. That was that, that. That's pretty much my view of it. You know, I mean, uh, uh, I think that we're going to start seeing the events happening really fast. He told me months ago. He said, "Pretty soon, you're going to see the events happening like beads falling off a necklace." And he said, "And every once in a while, there'll be a pearl will fall off, and that'll be my prophecies." And he said it's going to start happening so fast that it'll be back to back. You almost won't be able to tell them apart once they start. He goes, but I'm telling you, once they start, you better have your seatbelt on because you're going to need it. And I do believe John Moore was hinting at that very thing, although I was disappointed in something that he said, and that was promoting the pagan holiday of Christmas. Yeah, did you notice that any- too? I was like. I was like, yeah. I was like, I, that, I almost puked when I heard that. I was like, I was like, uh, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ on Christmas. I'm like, are you kidding me? Hey, no, I know John Moore, and I was surprised that he said that because everybody knows that that the Lord was born in September, not in December. December right. is but, Nimrod's birthday, there, there, and a, there, Nimrod there, was an a, evil son of a bitch. There, there's, there's. There's a there's a toss up that either Jesus was born September I think it was September eighth or August twenty first to seven BC so there's a there's a debate on that but it, you know it's close enough I mean it, it, you know the the calendar yeah he was he was would, actually would, born would a few years that. before they say he was and uh, he was born in the fall they know that uh, you know uh, most people believe that he was probably born on the twenty eighth of September. Uh, because of the uh, festival of the trumpets, and that was the festival of the trumpets was uh, actually uh, the announcement of his birth, the star in the sky, and everything. Right. Uh, but you know, getting back to Nebiru, okay. Now, every time Nebiru is passed, and uh, the Egyptians have recorded four passings uh, when we were on the same side of the sun as it was that would cause the pole shift. That when Venus went went uh, around by the uh, uh, sun, uh, it appeared to do a double back loop as it was making its uh, transition across the sky, and that was always an indication to them 
that uh, the pole shift was imminent because it was close enough by to cause it to do that. And, uh, of course, we just witnessed it doing that. And so, uh, you know, I do believe that uh, those guys that were talking on the Internet one day that said this thing is just right behind us right now, and it's actually chasing us around the sun, and it's catching up with us, and uh, as, as it comes in, because it's coming in from an angle, uh, you know, we know that it just came past Jupiter here last year and caused it to do a roll, so that it definitely places it in the inner solar system. And uh, uh, I do believe that uh, it's going to be crossing our path underneath of us any day, and we'll know that it crossed underneath of us because this planet's going to do a 50-degree roll when it does. And, uh, now, of course, it's, inter it's interesting that you say that because earlier today I was actually out and I was uh, videotaping the sun, and I did put welder's glasses up to my camera, and there is a definitive second object that's not a lens flare because it is it, it moves with the sun. It, it, it literally it doesn't move from its tr you know it, it might change its if I if I like adjust the welder's glasses it might change the angle of where it is on the sun, but when you put it next to the sun and you move the camera back and forth it stays right smack dab there so that to me proves that there is an object right behind the sun well have you have you guys been paying any attention to steve Quayle and what he's been saying lately on the hagman and i Hagman haven't report and stuff steve as, of, as of late what's going on with mr Quayle? well but, you know one of his favorite subjects is to talk about giants you know because uh our uh our but military has uh uh ran into quite a few of them in caves in the middle east over there and yep. uh, they came across several ones that were alive. They've even managed to capture a couple of them. They've had to kill a few of them because these guys aren't little guys. Uh, apparently, they caught one recently that was, uh, I don't know, I guess about 14 feet tall, and uh, they had a hell of a time subduing him. Uh, they discovered that their small arms fire were not very effective against these guys, but, uh, you know, when I think about the size of that spaceship that I saw last year going uh, across the mountains here in Colorado, uh, I don't know how big these guys are. Steve Quayle says they're real big, that uh, some of them are as tall as 38 feet. Uh, this thing was big enough to where it could have had a few thousand of those 38-foot tall guys in it, and it would have been no problem because I'm telling you, this thing was at least a thousand feet in diameter, maybe more, and at least a couple of miles long. I mean, it was big. I don't have any trouble uh, understanding that there could be races out there that are real big guys, and there and 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 there's no way that you're going to be able to to fight these guys to kill them or anything. Uh, you know, if you think about. What happened, when was that, about 15, 10, 15 years ago, that big one landed in Russia right in the town square, and uh, these great big guys got out of it and were working on it while the whole town stood around and watched and went, holy shit, look how big these guys are. And they were great big guys. I guess they were about 12 feet tall or something, and uh, they were working on their spaceship. And when they got it repaired, they flew off in it. But, uh, you know, they were. it landed right in the middle of the town square. <clears throat> and everybody in the whole town saw it. And uh, it was a couple of mentions on the news about it, but not really too much, mainly in the uh, little rag newspapers and stuff were uh, pictures of it. And a lot of people took pictures of it. They took pictures of the guys that were working on it, and they were great big suckers. So, you know, are there big guys out there? Yeah, there are. Well, the Bible says we're going to see all kinds of uh, stuff happening. Now, getting back to your sighting out by the sun, Hey, if you recall what, uh, was that Phil Schneider? No, it was William Cooper was talking about one that uh, they had gotten secrets to uh, material that could be grown out in space. It was like a, uh, it was like human skin, only it was uh, an artificial product, and the stuff would withstand 10,000 degrees with no effect on it, and they could fly right up to the sun and not have any problems at all. Now, this is stuff that William Cooper was talking about. And uh, so, you know, 
there's definitely a lot of technology out there that we don't, you know, I mean, as civilians, we don't know anything about. I'm sure that NASA and DARPA and all the rest of them know all about this stuff. I mean, uh, they're playing around with all, all kinds of little uh, drones and crap like that, you know. I mean, uh, the size of hummingbirds that fly in your house and uh, then sit around there in the corner and film you and stuff. I mean, the, you know, uh, 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 I think people had better be handy with their shotguns. I tell people all the time, if you don't have a sword, you'd better get one. Buy one that's got at least a three-foot blade so that that way if you have to fight some of these devils, uh, you can have your Bible in one hand and your sword in the other, and you'll be able to fight these guys. Otherwise, they'll just massacre you. Uh, I think we've got a lot of things that are fixing to come on us that we're not going to be ready for. Like, for example? Well, like uh, demons, uh, aliens. Uh, uh, humans that were created in laboratories. I mean, look at that big one they busted. Where was that? In Norway or somewhere? The thing was, uh, miles long. And, uh, yep. they had a production mine set up in there and they were, they were cloning, uh, human soldiers in the place and they rescued like 200 of them out of there. Did well, you there see was that a, story? There, uh, I, I might have. Uh, there was a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Alfred Weber uh, came out with uh, this uh, bean that looked like a hobbit. Uh, right here, he goes. Uh, this was in the Natural News. Uh, 150 animal-human hybrid embryos have been produced by a mad scientist in the UK with full government approval under the 2008 yeah. Human Fertilization Embryology Act. The UK's daily uh, newspaper is reporting that a committee of scientists recently blew the whistle on the Operation Express Alarm over the possibility of experiments going too far and resulting in a real Planet of the Age scenario where animals escape from a lab and begin reproducing in the wild. Sound like science fiction? It's actually just an extension of science fact. Human-animal hybrids have been produced by these UK scientists for at least the last three years. Among the monstrosities they created were animal egg fertilized with human sperm and cybreds, animal cells that are injected with human cell nuclei. They are also uh, chimeras, a mixture of human cells and animal cells, much like that happened in the sci-fi Planet of the Apes depiction of science gone wrong. And then there's this picture of this thing. It looks like a, uh, a human pig. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Hey, listen. They've been playing around with all kinds of stuff they shouldn't have been playing around with. That's what I said. Uh, my brother told me that we have no clue what's coming at us and that they're going to be unleashing huge amounts of these uh, uh, human hybrid uh, animal uh, things loose on, uh, on us. Uh, one of my biggest concerns that I've had ever since I discovered that uh, in the northeastern uh, tip of Australia, they had that historic park down there where they were breeding dinosaurs that they brought back from the past by the thousands. Not in Australia, yeah, we talked about that before. Right, and, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, these velaraptors, uh, only an idiot would bring those back from the past, and apparently they brought back thousands of them. Uh, I really, truly believe that we're going to see prehistoric animals unleashed on us. We're going to see cupacabras unleashed on us. We're going to see such a wide variety of wild stuff released on us that it's going to be really mind-blowing to a lot of people uh, of what all is going well, to be released. Well, you know this happened once before, right? You know this happens once before. Oh, yeah. That, that, well, that happened that's in the, the whole problem. Age. It happened in the Dark Ages. Yeah, they've got Stargates. I mean, that's what, uh, uh, the, you know, Steve Quayle was talking about the CERN Collider over there in Switzerland, that uh, they were really worried that that's exactly what they were building was a big Stargate, Stargate. so that these yeah. really big entities could come through from the next dimension into this right. one. Well, you that's know, what they and, say, FEMA, the Destroyer. Uh, the, the, I mean, recently Hillary Clinton did a Good Morning America uh, uh, interview while she was in Switzerland, and she had Shiva the Destroyer right next door to her. Uh, and of course, there's a huge nobody knows why there's a huge uh, monument 
of Shiva the Destroyer right there at the CERN project. So it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I think that CERN is one huge stargate. We know that time travel, there was a, a guy a couple years back that got uh, caught in, inside CERN. They, he had said that he was a time traveler. They incarcerated him and then he disappeared out of thin air. Yeah, well, you, you ought to hear some of the stories. Uh, you know, I don't live too far from Deluce, New Mexico, and I talk to people occasionally that have been down there uh, working there and stuff. And I hear some really, really over-the-top wild stories about stuff that's been going on down there for a long, long time. And I can tell you, uh, these military people have been so far out of control for so long, uh, I think the American people would be terribly shocked if they ever got away from their vomit TV and started checking out what their government's been doing. They would not only be horrified, but they'd be in shock and horrified at the same time just how really far out of control these people actually are. And all of this stuff has been kept a secret because the American people are willfully stupid. And this is going to come home to haunt them. I can guarantee you there's going to be trouble on the horizon they can't even imagine. And I can tell you, I just the thought of uh, 14, 15-foot-tall guys uh, dressed in military uniforms uh, 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 doing God knows what. I mean, I've always thought since day one that the pyramids were built prior to the last pole shift and uh, and that they were stacked up probably by these big guys because... There's really no other explanation for how stones that big got mounted up. I mean, you look at some of those things, and the uh, architecture and design and construction is just so far over the top. And now we've got all of these uh, ragheads over there in Egypt talking about they want to tear them down. Yeah, well, I was you know what? that earlier today. Yeah, this is just insanity. Uh, they took out. Uh, they're dictators around the world. They've been taking out the dictators so that they can put in their dummies and uh, get their one world order thing going, which is how they've got to do it. They've got to take out all the uh, leaders are in every country and then and then place their Rothschild uh, dictators in, in position. And, of course, you know, uh, uh, that'll bring in their one world order because they'll all work for the same guy. But, uh, uh, you know... Now they've got these morons down there in Egypt that want to tear down the pyramids. They want to do this. They want to do that. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know how they plan on doing it. You know, what, are they going to put a nuclear weapon in the thing and blow it up or what? Because uh, they're sure as hell not uh, equipped to dismantle it uh, manually. They'll have right. to blow the things apart. Uh, they well, put some, say that they, in some say that the Giza pyramid is actually one big... Uh, uh, military weapon as well, and that well, is, you know, I'll tell you what. That when Nibiru very comes close, that this thing is when Nibiru comes close, that this thing is supposed to shoot out some sort of ray. Well, that's that. what they did on Mars. They had to disable that beacon before they could approach the planet. Yep. You know, it had a big beacon going, and uh, nothing could approach the planet. And uh, uh, they had to go on. There's a lot to think about on this, but I'm, I'm going to close out the show uh, here. Uh, Arizona, we've got about five, five, ten minutes left of the show. Uh, <coughs> what are you doing this Saturday? You want to join me over on uh, Truth Frequency? Yeah, I was thinking about that. What time is that going to be kicking off anyway, Colorado? Now, I, started, I started 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Uh, it's at uh, truthfrequencyradio.com. Uh, uh, and I start at 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. I'm, I I have it billed for just a couple hours, but uh, I might go until midnight, uh, see how it goes. I mean, if we get a good conversation going. This is my second show on uh, the special edition of 32 Degrees of Insanity. Uh, and uh, uh, so Minister Kenneth Emanuel is going to join me. And if you want to join us, uh, that would be great, too. Yeah, I might do that because, uh, you know, Saturday's the Sabbath, and I usually yep. don't do anything on the Sabbath, but uh, hang around and uh, try to stay out of trouble, eh? Exactly. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, shoot me an email or, or, or just show up uh, uh, at truthfrequencyradio.com, and uh, we start at 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, going until 11 or midnight, so. 
So, yeah, that would be 9 o'clock Pacific would put you starting at midnight here. Uh, you're Colorado time, right? Yeah. So you got 9, 10, 11. 10 o'clock your time. I'm only an hour. You're Central Standard Time, right? Uh, I think I might be Mountain Time. I don't know. Maybe I'm Central Time. Yeah. If you're I really Central don't pay that much attention to it. Because uh, Chris and Sheree are in Colorado, too, and they're only an hour uh, difference than me. So, oh, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, they're up in what, the Springs? Yeah, they're up near Colorado Springs, so. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right. Well, thanks for calling in, Arizona. I really appreciate it. Yeah, let's have a uh, let's have a chat about this some more because uh, I think yeah. this gun deal that Obama's fixing to put in, and uh, and then Sheriff Apio is fixing to uh, spring the trap on this guy on the seventeenth. I personally well, think right, before yeah, this right, month's right. over, we're going to see all hell break loose. Yeah, it's going to be uh, an interesting month. I tell you, it's going to carry right into uh, August twenty first, where I think uh, uh, even more hell is going to break loose, and that's kind of what John Moore was talking about. We're about six weeks away, and that kind of puts us right at about August twenty first, where I yeah, I know that, uh, we're that's the claimed the date of Nebaru's arrival too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, all right, we'll talk soon. We'll talk soon, Arizona. Have a wonderful night. All right. See you later, man. Take care. All right, brother. Thanks. Uh, of course, guys, that's Arizona, one of our great contributors to 32 Degrees of Insanity, uh, very well versed uh, in uh, the Nibiru subject. Uh, of course, he agrees with me on the August 21st thing. He's, that's uh, kind of the projected uh, arrival date. Uh, we'll see what happens on that date. Um, I think things are getting a lot closer uh, as time goes on here, especially with some of the stuff that I saw uh, today while I was looking at welders glasses. It was just uh, very interesting. So, you know, before I go, I want to clear something up because I, I, I see a guy in uh chat room here saying that um, speaking in tongues is uh, something uh, that uh, uh, speaking of Satan, you know. Now, I will agree on one thing in regards to that. I believe te speaking in tongues as a group, a large group, kind of like the Pentecostals do, I I don't believe is speaking of the Holy Spirit. I might be wrong. I don't know. That's my humble opinion. However, speaking in tongue to myself, open, one-on-one, -on -one, to you, and to God, is not of Satan. Now, some of you have heard me speak in tongues before. Some of you have said, you can't do that on uh, on demand. I do not believe that is of the sea. If you tell me that I can't do it on demand, then you don't know anything about tons. Tons is a gift given by the Holy Spirit. I received that gift back in, oh gosh, I want to say it was 2000, I remember it too, it was weird, I was like in my shower, <laughs> really, I remember this, and I was in my shower, and I kept calling out, Christos, Cabras, Christos, 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 and I'm like, what the heck am I talking, you know, I'm like, what the heck, and so I remember running to my pastor, and I'm like, God! What's going on here? Uh, I'm speaking in gibberish. And the pastor goes to me. He goes, no, you're speaking in tongues. You've been touched by the Holy Spirit. Be mindful of it. Enjoy it. Pray in it. Don't abuse it. Because I have abused it. Where I've yelled at people in tongues. Not on my show.
I want us all to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like Arizona said, you know, I think we're heading towards that time where everybody needs to believe. Get to know the Lord. I mean, what, 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 think about it. Think about this, guys. Wouldn't you like to get to know somebody that loves you? Cares for you? Why turn your back on that? What kind of a win-win situation, don't you think? I mean, really, if, if, if anything in my ministry, I do call this my ministry because it is kind of my ministry, you know, all I really would like to do is, is for, for you guys to have a relationship with Christ, a relationship with the Holy Spirit, to have a relationship with God. Regardless of the guru, that's just uh, kind of icing on the cake. That's the signs and wonders of the sky. I, I hope that all of you out there tonight will rethink about the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. And I emphasize stating the Lord Jesus Christ, not just Jesus Christ. It was kind of washing him under the rug. Even if you call him the Lord Emmanuel. Or Yahshua, by his real name. Yahshua. Did you know that the word, that even the J, the letter J, was not even part of the Hebrew? So really the word Jesus, probably not what Jesus was named when he walked the earth anyways. reason why we don't have any historical writings about him. Yes, Truth Frequency does have a chat, uh, guys. Uh, it is uh, just uh, uh, Chitango, Truth Frequency. I will put all that information <coughs> out uh, on, my, on my Facebook page. The day of the show, you'll have all that information, guys. So uh, it'll be real easy to find. Uh, TruthFrequencyRadio.com, I think Chris is going to bring the chat room to the front page. He had it. Uh, on different pages, but I think he's been bring the front page of a small little widget for everybody as well. Uh, with that being said, guys, uh, we've got a couple minutes left of the show here. I've been kind of rambling here. Uh, just remember, uh, the heated conversation tomorrow, we start, uh, uh, we start, uh, Vicki starts her show at 10.30 specific standard time, going all the way till midnight. Uh, of course, she has her round table section, her round table session on Fridays from 9 o'clock till midnight. Those are the days I'm out and about, guys. I'm out and about. I, you, one of the reasons why you haven't heard me on her show is I'm out doing my deal. I'm, you know, because now I have a Saturday night show, uh, which is a special edition of 32 Degrees of Insanity on truthfrequencyradio.com. Of course, we are here, back here every Monday and Wednesday night. I uh, remember the Pythagoras Conference. Of course, uh, we're going to be giving more details on how to win tickets. Uh, to the Pythagoras Conference, and uh, please get the word out. Uh, come to www.ursuadams.com if you're interested in buying a ticket. Uh, the tickets, I think, are $4.99, but if you come to my website and type in the promotional code DON, uh, you, or even if you go to the Pythagoras Conference and type in the promotional code DON, uh, you can get uh, 100 bucks off uh, the ticket as well. We'd like to see a lot of people going to that conference, and of course, I will be having the CEO of the Pythagoras Conference on my show on uh, the 30th of August. Uh, so Sandra Sabatini will be with me on the 30th of August right here talking about the Pythagoras Conference and, and, as well. Laura Eisenhower has also confirmed with me that she will be on my show first week in August. So we're, we'll have the great, great granddaughter of Dwight D. Eisenhower back on the show uh, in August. So a lot of things are working on. It is summer, so I want you to enjoy it, relax it, and have fun. Don't put this stuff, don't worry about it, don't willy-nilly about it. Just have fun. Get to know the Lord, get yourself spiritually set and, and, and ready. Because we don't know if this is going to happen, but if it does, it's always good to know that you are spiritually and mindfully set. With that being said, I love you all. Thank you all for joining me on 32 Degrees of Insanity this evening. God bless and good night.